walk these streets with diamonds in our eyes Out with the vampires under a midnight sky My mind so hypnotized It was exciting It was the 90s Daddy always said that I was going too far I said there's never any compromising If you try to win the battle to be who you are I dance to the left, I dance to the right Hold hands with my demons and creatures of night On an undercover mission to find
thought we'd seen it all. Brightly lit future with flying cars, and we'd all be superstars. Energy is endlessly entertaining us violently. Commercials play on TV, and nothing was ever free.
Oh, oh. Great if we could do better. Than that. If you could do me the favor, thanks so much. Please do me a favor. WP, I just 1651. It would be great if you could do me the favor. Double double the audio, double double your fun. Double double Saturday nights, all right for asking. You know what I'm saying? WPIG 1651. Time for us to get some questions answered, to get berated a few times, get some paper flashed at us. So much fun ready to happen today in WPIG 1651. Few business style announcements ready for you tomorrow. WPIG goes live 7:30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Four hours of music to get you ready for the Sunday show with me and whoever else happens to be there, and the special guest that goes by the name of Atlas the Bookkeeper. That's tomorrow. Get ready for that. Hoping to finish tonight as a nice little pregame into the night stream, and I see. That piece of piece is restreaming the night stream. So let's try to get us done by then. Warm you up. And then you go to piece of pieces house for a nice night. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So let's get to it. No more rigmarole ready, except for a few cards I have to show you. I did edge you enough to show you. And we got a lot of new cards ready in the pool. So let's get to them now, right? Because you can't pull tonight. As I can see, we got people shooting up over there, as Phil would say it. Uh, but let's go to our some new style cards. Um, first up, we have Laveria. So Laveria Media there is a deep pool. And uh, if you have any questions about that, you can do Laveria, I believe. And it should show up, give you a little story there. If you want to know more about that nonsense, obviously, there it is right there. Uh, they're the honey dickers, as it were. Uh, that's, that, that's worth a, a deep dive someday. Uh, but that's in the pool. We also have, as our next new car, we have cranberry sauce the essential uh so good you'll leave your cart for it you know what i'm saying you get the drift there cranberry sauce is now in the pool uh, let's put that away for now <laughs> next up we have in the theory in, in the spirit of thanksgiving we have a mother's love card <laughs> and this is probably my personal favorite of this batch a mother's love, which, uh, you know, it, it, you can see how much it costs right there, okay? <laughs> you can see how much it costs right there. Uh, let's put it back here. <laughs> we also, for completionist purposes, we have the Jintro winner commemorative card. Uh, the Jintro there, you can see all the, the uh, entrants there. And our winner was, of course, Jay doing things with DSP, the toxic video game guy. Uh, so that is there as well, commemorative card. Next up, we have, I'm still going here. We, next up, we have a card, uh, magazine style. We have one created here, Snood City. Uh, this, was all, this was submitted, by the way, uh, and I think it's awesome. Uh, Detractor Beam, Snood City, a babe to beg for. So Detractor Beam fans definitely want to get your hands on that one, all right? You want to get that right now. Uh, I'm going to put that away for us now. Next up, we have a... <laughs> this one is <laughs> this one's uh, equally silly. British style reference card. Okay, so this artwork was done by Dark Sea to Phil. And uh, instead of making all these separate British style references, I wanted to keep it to one. So we just have British style references now. Uh, and they're just a single card for that. So British style reference. There you go. Good luck. Three more cards to go through. Two more, excuse me. We have okay, uh, the legendary, what Phil likes to break out. The Cat Shield, a pity farmer's best friend. This could come out in any time you want to seek pity. Uh, for whatever reason you need or you want to blame someone for your hardships, just break out the Cat Shield and it will come in handy, okay? Cat Shield is now in the pool. Good luck to you. And uh, one more here, Animal Farm. I teased this yesterday. Animal Farm by George Orwell with some special, special art there. And that was made, of course, by Darcy DeFille as well. I did tease this one, but it's so sick. I'll show it to you again. Call of Gaudi. That's from Jay Doing Things created that one. I love that one. <laughs> and we do have, again, that was my decompression, back decompression. And we also have DSP tries that already showed all those. So no more need for that. But there you go. All the new cards added in. Total new cards. I saw someone ask. I think the total pool count now is, I can show you right now. It is 250 cards on the nose. We have 250 cards, and your odds of getting a six Gout Crystal Foil Hogan are now this. Uh, and it's pretty bleak. I think you have a better chance of winning the lottery legitimately 
uh, legitimately. <laughs> so if you want to make a car, by the way, I see you asking there, Black Doom. I use just Canva.com. If you want to be crazy, you can use um, you can use Photoshop as well. Uh, all the only requirement is it's 600 by 780, 787. So whatever you sit, send, I have to make it that size. Um, but there you go. Awesome stuff. Enough nonsense. Let's get to it. So we are going back in time to September 13th, 2010 for our fourth ever DSP's Inbox. Yes, that's right. We are not doing, we are not doing Ask the King yet. We are still pre-Ask the King. This is DSP's inbox. I hope you're ready. We're tracking, by the, for the record, we're tracking literally counts. We're tracking questions. We're, crash, we're tracking flashing the paper. What else are we tracking? We're tracking uh, 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 berating the questioner, and uh, I think that is it. And also when he says, it's funny. You know what? This is funny. You know what? This is interesting. Blah, blah, blah. You'll get the point quickly. All right, let's get into it. Let's have some fun. Hey everyone, it's DSP, and uh, welcome to another edition of DSP's Inbox. Oh, hey. uh, In a little bit of a different setting this time. Oh, wow, it's so amazing. I, different setting. Uh, it's kind of funny. I've lived here at this condo for over a year, and I really never set up the bedroom. Um, it's a real <laughs> big mess. What a shock. I had this jalopy of a computer desk that I had taken from my last place where I was living. That... <laughs> jalopy? <laughs> I had this jalopy? Real big mess. I had this jalopy of a computer desk. That oh, I... did he say funny? I didn't hear that. I was I was not even logged in. I wasn't checked in yet mentally. Really never this. Hold and, on. Uh, welcome to another edition of DSP's Inbox. Uh -huh. uh, in a little bit of a different setting this time. Uh, it's kind of funny. I've lived oh, there you're right. I missed it. Condo for over a year. <laughs> not really never gonna this. Gonna this. Gonna yes. <laughs> I had this jalopy of a computer desk that I had taken from my last place where I was living that was you're falling right. apart, and uh, I had nothing set up here. Yeah, you're right, Dave. And I need that. Dresser and stuff like that. So that's actually what I was doing this past week, and I actually went out to Ikea oh, and oh, uh, bought uh, Ikea. this nice three-tier computer desk. I was able to build it myself overnight. Um, <laughs> build it myself overnight. <laughs> let me tell you something about Ikea. I don't know if what? you've ever been there, but um, tell you. it's a bunch of Swedish people who, who own the company. It's a Swedish company. It's a bunch of Swedish people. That's... <laughs> What do we know about Ikea? It's a bunch of Swedish people, dudes. And it's funny because when you go to build their furniture, uh -oh. there's no words at all. Like, there's no Not instructional fun. words. It's just trying to, like, try to figure out how to do this with pictures with absolutely no description. So, I'm going to be honest with you, it wasn't exactly the easiest thing to set up. Yeah, that's how dumb you have to be to fuck that up. They just do pictures for, like, anyone. They're trying to make it for any IQ level. But clearly, you know what? It's kind of tough. <laughs> Uh, when I was trying to build this thing, some of us like, put this here and then jam, but there's no arrows either. So you're like, you got to put this here, wiggle this here. Oh, God. And, can you imagine that footage? <laughs> and you really, it's this, you didn't really take screws or anything to build this. It's more of, you know, one of those, they try to make it easy so that anyone can build it, even if you don't, you don't have drills or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, get the point, get the hint. <laughs> Doesn't that tell you something? Yeah, but it was an undertaking, but I got it together and uh, this is my new setup in my bedroom. Right. Uh, for, you know, getting on the internet and all that. I've got my wireless printer here, which I've had for a while, which is pretty cool. I can print from anywhere in the condo. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> that comes in clutch when your condo's of the vastness of yours, for sure. You can print from anywhere in the condo, dude. Um, so, yeah. Uh, this is <laughs> yeah. just, I uh, thought, a little bit of a change of atmosphere would be pretty cool for this video. Okay, um, cool. Change of atmosphere. And, um... I love this thing. Let me tell you. I know that I've been mentioning it previously in a couple of videos. Okay, it's chilling my already. Cafe Press website. Um, the, it's www.cafepress.com. Chill, chill, chill. Film, where you can get all kinds of dark side film merchandise. Chill, but chill. Let me tell you, this beer stein is so awesome. For the past like week since I got it, I've been walking around the condo with it in my hand, just drinking out of it constantly. <laughs> you know what? My thing. This is pretty awesome. He walks around the condo with them. <laughs> it's like his friend. <laughs> Pickups to pasta maker says wireless printers are the epitome of cool dudes. Exactly, low tier god, black and white for Tom. Let's see what the pasta maker gets. Oh, big ups Nathan Collins by the way for becoming a member. You are a legend forever. Don't want to leave you out, my friend. But, but let's see, he's walking around nude with his fucking Stein. Not beer, you know. I hear have some water because you know I'm the condo with it in my hand, just drinking out of it constantly. Uh -huh. Not beer, you know. I hear have some water because you know oh, okay. this video, my mouth mm -hmm. will probably get dry. Not beer. But it's just freaking awesome and. uh it's funny because my, my friends are like, oh, oh so now you're like, you think you're like a regal king now? Really? You walk around with your goblet? I was like, well, you know, I not pretty fun. cool thing, but that's just one example of the stuff that's up at Cafe Press. Um, and what I'm going to be doing, like I said, I did buy a lot of it. Um, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, the shirts that I bought are in the wash right now. 
But once all that stuff is available to show I'm you, I bought a lot of shit, dude. And I will be uh, showing you a lot more of it. Just so you know, again, for the holidays, a lot of people last year asked for this kind of stuff. In uh -huh. fact, I did get an email. It's not in my questions for today, but oh, one of the emails in the that, inbox was, "You have merch done. available." So apparently, it's the word. I haven't spread it far enough. Um, yes, go to Cafe Press and check it out. And uh, more about that later on, obviously, as we get towards the holidays and once I get to demo a lot of that stuff for you guys. Mm -hmm. okay. But anyway, uh, a nice hefty dose of it's questions like for today's DSP inbox video. Remember, I have no time limit, so I'm going to try to go uh, you know, as long as I need it. I'll probably split it around 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, great. Um, Can't wait. But a couple things. The first oh, thing I want to tell everyone, uh, which I've already said in my last channel update, it's but just I just want to remind place. everyone I have a Twitter account now. It's at twitter.com oh, uh, backslash of which, they call me DSP. They call me DSP. I got that tweet, by the way. This is a tweet uh, from 2010. It's not interesting. And you can, for some reason, you can't see the responses anymore, which kind of sucks. But yeah, new DSP inbox. I mean, unless he didn't have any responses, I guess that's funny. But keep, 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 just so you know, guys, Death Spank is on hold. Okay. Death Spank is on hold. Okay. <laughs> And then the follow-up response is, okay, I'm, I'm currently amassing questions for tonight's inbox video. So same kind of shit, but whatever. And if you go there, I'm really primarily going to be using that to explain what I'm doing with my game playthroughs uh, through this gaming season of the fourth quarter of 2010. The uh, reason I'm going to be doing that is, for example, perfect example is today. Do we need um, example of Twitter? Spank footage up that's <laughs> not completed. The game's not over. It's probably Shout out to Death Spank. About two-thirds done. And, um... I'm not going to get a chance to play that game again and beat it in time uh -huh. before other games come out. For example, tomorrow Halo Reach comes out. So you Twitter chose to break the right law. After I may put this video up, I'll Live with the consequences. Say, hey, everyone, FYI, Death Spank's on hold for Halo Reach, but if I have time to play it in the meantime, I'll go back to it. I'm definitely going to beat it. I think it's a good game. Uh -huh, so that's right. what I'm going to be using Twitter for. I actually used it uh, over the past couple of days for that kind of stuff. And um, also just, you know, random things that happen that go on, you know, with me and my uh -huh. thoughts. I was watching a movie with Jim Carrey. What was it? The number 23. I had some thoughts about that movie. So that's the kind of stuff. Uh, you want to see what those thoughts are? Might as well, right? We're here. The thoughts on the movie 23 by Jim Carrey. I will do an advanced search for Jim Carrey thoughts from DSP. This is what you're here for. Carrey. Let's see how many Jim Carrey thoughts DSP has. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's do all time. Fuck it. Okay, here we go. Here's the thoughts. Here's the deep thoughts. You ready? Uh, here are the deep thoughts. Get out of here. The deep thoughts are Jim Carrey and Steve Carell are law cows. Oh, that was, that was too late. That's 2021. But 2010, he said, just watch the number 23. What a creepy movie. If only Jim Carrey didn't play the lead role. LOL. I keep laughing at him because of his... You can't be serious, right? Because he's known for funny stuff, you can't, you can't, if he just, because he's on the screen, you start laughing? Oh, come on, man, I'm not looking for the second half of that. Funny guy used to be in funny movies. When I see him on screen, I still can't help but laugh. Sound good? Stuff I'll be putting up on Twitter, um, <laughs> so follow along. It's, I think, honestly, it might be a better place than even some of my YouTube pages to figure out what I'm doing with videos, because right now... Having so many different YouTube pages, a lot of people don't know where to go. So uh -huh. spread the word, Twitter. Do we ever get questions here? Go there. You'll find uh, what's going on with, with recent Animal games, Farm, first poll, I believe. Okay. Without further ado, let's get into the questions. Some really good ones again, Almost I a have flat. to say. I'm very pleased. This is, mm, this is actually making that's me happy. That's a flat. Remember when I was doing the friend request ridicule videos, I had to oh, stop making them because I wasn't getting anything. Sorry about that, everybody. <laughs> if you're eating. Friend request ridicule videos. Thanks for the membership. <laughs> Big ups toilet tequila. Good luck on your poll. Actually making me happy because if you remember when I was doing the friend request ridicule videos. Oh god! It's not making that reverberated. There was some reverberation. Look at this. It like possesses him for a second. Oh yeah, that's the good stuff right there. Oh man, sorry about this. Here, here we go. In and then, oh. oh God! Look at the nose. <laughs> I had to stop I making them because I wasn't getting anything good to talk about. This is some good material, so thanks, everyone. Oh, that was um, an anti b rate. Oh, that was b rating past questioners, but so that doesn't count. Particular order here. Let's see where I should start. Okay, where are we gonna start, bro? <clears throat> All right, 
This one's actually kind of important, so let's address this one first. It, this person says, Hey Phil, a few months ago someone made a fake John Rambo page on you. That's our 28th question so far, by the way. I went back and counted. So we're going to keep track of how many questions we asked in this entire series. This is only episode two, so who knows? YouTube and a fake channel for Howard as well. We all know that he got scared off a few weeks ago, but apparently he's back because John Rambo actually has a, a real YouTube page. And this imposter is spamming videos on your main page. Uh -oh. Do you have anything to say about this? And that's from Kyle May. Well, uh -huh. um, what do I have to say about this? The first thing I want to say is John Rambo does have a YouTube page. It's John Rambo Presents. So nothing else that you see on YouTube is official. Uh -huh. John Rambo Presents is Rambo my Presents friend John Rambo's official YouTube page. In got fact, it. he now has over four days of Japan footage up there. He's in Big Japan right Rambo. now practicing Pan the Battle Opera qualifiers. Go over there and check out his videos because they're pretty interesting and they give you some pretty cool insight into the country over there. Um, so this is what back in the day when Phil would give you know full-hearted shout-outs. You know that was just a full-hearted shout-out. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, no negative things to say yet. Just go check out John Rambo. What do I have to say? As most normal humans would do. About the imposter, I guess. Uh, nothing much. Just that he's a cock-sucking, uncle-fucking piece of shit. You know, pillow-biting, fucking milk dug chugging. You know, cum guzzling piece of garbage who's trying to basically, you know. Being an <laughs> like he's trying to get donations. So, again, everyone, listen. John Rambo's official page is John Rambo Presents. He also has a Twitter account. It's Super John Rambo. Cock guz... What was it? Cum guzzling face in the pillow? Besides those two... I'm just going past it. I don't give a shit. Things ...or anything you see on my page that I put up... Don't trust anyone because there are people out there, it's sad to say, uh -huh. you know, there are people Pillow out there that are trying to take advantage of you because you maybe want to help John out because he's in Japan and he has this expensive trip and you want to support him for SBO. They're trying to trick you into donate to fake causes. So don't believe it. Um, only go to those official things that I just talked about. Okay. 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 Next question. I don't know if you've answered this question before, but I want to make sure. If you know that a game is going to be short and not that good, why buy the game? <laughs> look at look up to the camera like he's reading a report, you know, like he'd tell you in elementary school. When you're reading a report, look up from time to time. Look at this. And he just looks up just out of obligation. Doesn't add anything. I want to make sure. If you know that <laughs> there it was. Question. I don't know if you've answered this question before, but I want to make sure. <laughs> if you know that a game is going to be short and not that good, uh -huh. why buy the game? Wouldn't you? Wouldn't renting the game save you some money? Yeah, Even if you question. do trade your games back in, GameStop doesn't give you a good percentage of what you actually paid for to begin with. And that's from Daniel Perez. Well, Daniel, Daniel, I can't remember if in a DSP inbox I've addressed this before. I know I've addressed Ooh, this before. Is this great or not? Things like that. But I guess this is a good venue to, to talk no, about sounds it. Sounds fine. Um, sounds fine. I don't rent games, and there's a very simple reason why. What's you the simple reason? You can't get good games, new games, on release day. Like, for example... Halo Reach. Tomorrow, if I tried to rent Halo Reach, you know how long it would take me to get Halo Reach? Unless I completely lucked out if I tried to get it from, let's say, you know, Gamefly, or even if I went to the local Blockbuster video or game rental store, mm -hmm. I'm not going to get it. Oh, God. That's the problem Sorry, with game guys. rental places, is that they're extremely high demand because it's people that can't afford the games go there to try to rent the games. Assholes, so, in other words. Sure, I could do that, <laughs> but the problem is my game playthroughs would probably be weeks old for a lot of these uh -huh. newer games, like Halo, like Fallout, like all the games that people are going to want to see on release. So, yes, if I wanted to save money, I could do that, but overall, for the quality of the video, for the popularity of the video, for when people want to see these playthroughs, mm -hmm. it wouldn't work, and it just wouldn't What's make the sense. What's up here? Funny. What's the Stetson box? Is that just... I know Stetson, for me, are like hats, I thought, but it looks like a... What is that Stetson? Anybody know? Can't tell what it is exactly. Weird. What is that? I, I, oh, the cat. Yeah, hats, right? But th that's where the hat fit in? Oh, okay. Because I had a friend who wanted to play Batman Arkham Asylum last year, and he didn't want to buy The picture next to it, though, doesn't look like a cowboy. Unless, I guess it's a standing... Oh, you know what? That picture, this is getting deep, by the way, but I think it's a, a guy and a kid standing there. They're probably both wearing cowboy hats. I believe. The game, he tried to get it from Gamefly. Well, if you remember, I bought the game on release day. I beat it within about a week. He couldn't get the game for over two months. Oh he my kept God. trying to put it on his list. I want the game. I want the game. 
They kept sending him shit games that he didn't want. <laughs> and then finally, after two months, he got it. And he was like, I don't care anymore. It's fucking two months later. Everyone has already played the game besides me. I don't want to play this anymore. Oh, so, wow. Imagine that. No, everyone else has already played this, so I no longer want to play it. Very normal gamer thought, isn't it? That's the reason why I don't rent games. I want to play them. I thought you were the common gamer. Right away when they're new, I don't want to wait. That's the way that the videos are going to become the most popular, and that's why I Uh, buy the games. Okay, okay. I thought you were the common gamer, though. Oh, boy. All right. This next one's a doozy. So I'm going to warn everyone because I'm going to talk about a lot of stuff that I've never talked about before or I've kind of alluded to but I've never really elaborated on. What? Question goes, hi, DSP. I was wondering if Machinima has ever Uh offered you a contract. Have they? This is pre-Machinima days, boys. Get ready, pre-Machinima. Many Machinima directors like Wings of Redemption, Blame Truth, FPS... Big ups to Wings of Redemption coming in hot in 2010. Is that the first mention of Wings of Redemption? Probably on Phil's channel. Have they? Many Machinima directors like Wings of Redemption, Blame Truth, FPS Kyle, and Woody... FPS Kyle! Gamer Tag, for example, have been getting their main accounts turned partner channel by Machinima. That's a lie. Machinima has nothing to do with getting your actual main account turned partner Ooh. more than likely what's happening is those people are putting this is close to a berate but i'll let you guys decide not yet i think your videos up on machinima what's up man just linking them to their own page so maybe it looks like those videos are partner videos but they're not those videos are partner videos for machinima machinima makes the money and then whatever contract those people have with machinima that's how they make money off of those videos so don't be fooled machinima is not turning anyone ch- anyone's channel's partner they're taking all of the money for those ads. So just to make that clear. Just to make that clear. So don't get it twisted, motherfuckers. All right. You got that? I know better than you. That's very close to berate, but I'll, I'll let it go. Now. He doesn't know even that. Has, he has no clue how it works, and you're correct, Seal. He just has no clue how it works, but he knows it's, it's not good for him because he's not in it yet. You know what I'm saying? It can't be cool because he's not doing it yet. He says, with the sheer number of videos that you upload every day... I'm sure if Machinima ever offered you a contract and turned your channel's partner, there'd be an extremely large payout for you. And that's yeah. from Pinwheel Kick. Well, Pinwheel Kick... Uh-oh, here comes the berate. Bottom line is this. Hey! Just a little bit under a year ago, I was offered a contract by Machinima. And first of all, the contract was no obligation. So I read it, and I was like, okay, and I signed it. But I never agreed to ever give them any content. And I did that for a reason, <laughs> because I... So I, I signed it, but did, what? What? What's this? What'd you sign then? Hold on, let me get this very straight. I signed it, but I never agreed. The contract was no obligation, so I read it and I was like, okay. And I signed it, but I never agreed to ever give them any content. And I did that uh, for a reason because I wanted to see what contract is this. I knew. See, I know business. I, a lot of people don't know this about me. Uh, I have a business degree. Okay, I went to college. I graduated. have finance degree. Graduated. I have a bachelor of science in business. That's actually a major in, uh, in finance. Okay, thank and you. So I know how it. businesses work. I knew. I know how business did work. That as soon as I signed the dotted line, <laughs> just get just get more credit cards. That's what you learned. Signed on that contract, and immediately a new listing of rules and regulations and terms and agreements. <laughs> yeah, that's what you always do. That's what big businessmen do: is sign on the dotted line first, and then figure it out. Uh huh. Uh huh. Sound good? Okay, so sign the contract and then figure it out. <laughs> you, then you figure out <laughs> what the company's all about, okay? Agreements were going to come flying at me because that's how they do these open contracts. They try to trick you with that kind of stuff. So I never gave them any content. I signed the initial contract and I waited and I wanted to see what was going to happen. So uh-huh. just as what I expected what would happen is exactly what happened. Oh, God, what happened? What happened? Take a sip. And the day after... That doesn't look like water. That's all I could say right there. Look at this. Exactly what happened. And the day after <laughs> I signed the contract, they sent me another one, which was basically their terms and regulations on how to put videos up on Machinima. Ah, so like rules of employment, basically, in a different way. Sound uh, You, you uh, must assume you need those, right, sir? Dot com and also on their page, the pages on YouTube. By the way, back then they only had one page. Since then, they've had a new page, and basically the bottom line was this. Uh, they all of a sudden sprung on me all these kinds of terms, conditions, and, and requirements that they had never even mentioned before, before I signed the contract. It was, in my opinion, <laughs> it was a slap in the face. It was very unprofessional to do. Yeah, so they gave me the, the rules of employment out of nowhere. You know, most places when you sign up to work there, 
Mm, there's usually a reason. <laughs> he said he read it all. I read it all, by the way. They didn't make you anything. Okay. Do it that way. Because I had asked them a lot of questions up front regarding that kind of stuff. They were like, eh, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. And then they sprung all this new stuff on me. So uh -huh. I could see, for example, if I were a teenager and... Oh, yeah. You're so far from a teenager, let me tell you. You look, you're like so far from being a teenager, dude. I didn't have a full-time job, and this weren't just my hobby. Maybe this was something that I was aspiring to do. Like, for example, Blame Truth. He's a really good player, and a lot of people love his videos on Machinima. And maybe one day this guy will become a pro player, and hell, maybe he'll do this for life. Who knows? Maybe this will be his job. He'll play games like Modern Warfare 2 and the pro circuits. Well, for no. him, it might be a good idea to try to do this full-time and make full-time videos for Machinima. Uh -huh. But for me, like I've always said, the reason that I pride myself on my videos is, number one, I'm completely independent. I don't get paid to do what I do. So I can ah, so this is free money. Free money, guys. Free money, DSP. Very rare breed here. I say whatever the fuck I want, and no one can censor me. And number two, because it's my hobby. This is something I do in my free time. It's not something I consider a full-time job, so there's really no pressure for me mm. to do my video one way or say this or say that. But here's a, here's a surprise fact. The second he could make money from it, he did. To try to get more <laughs> views or anything like that. Uh -huh. um, and basically, Machinima kind of slapped me in the face because... I slapped me in the face by telling me the rules. Sound good? He wanted him to be like, you know, he wanted him to be the, the, the top number one YouTuber that can do whatever the fuck they want. And Machinima doesn't give a shit because they just get money. They're like, all right, do whatever the fuck you want. Basically like Sniper Wolf, you know? Takes her a month to get banned for doxing because it's Sniper Wolf and she makes a fuck ton of money. She could probably do whatever the fuck she wants. A YouTube probably would never get rid of her permanently. Phil wanted that treatment, but didn't quite have the goods to back it up. <laughs> some of the terms, let me give you an example of some of the terms that I didn't like. They all of a sudden said, well, if you're going to put your videos up on our website, we wanted this certain file format. And I said, well, wait a minute. My camera records in this one file format. Dude, they asked for a file format, and that's already a problem. We're pro we had a problem with file formats. <laughs> because Frog Machine with the, with the deep lore drop, he was signed for Machinima in four months from this video. Nice. Nice pull. You want me to put, do another file format, so you're basically telling me that every single video that I make that I, I put on Machinima... You want me to run through a video conversion program. Well, that takes a lot of time. In fact, for most videos, it takes real time. So, for example, let's say... <laughs> it takes real time? He's going to say it does it in real time? I played for five hours today. Now I need to run five hours of videos through a video converter. I don't know of any... I mean, this is 2010, so maybe it's different, but video converters are one-to-one. -one. Mm. So I can't just give that content to Machinima. I have to spend 10 hours of work for five hours of video content. Uh Dude, like we said last week, like we said last week, encoding does not count as work. You don't break out the converters and the wires yourself, my friend. You really don't do that. I think everyone even knows, everyone knows that. <laughs> everyone understands that. <laughs> what, how do you undo the compression? You got to stand on it for five hours till it goes to its final size? <laughs> You want me to run through a video conversion program? Well, uh -huh. That takes a lot of time. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta translate all the ones and zeros. I gotta first, I gotta read all the ones and zeros, translate those into English. After that, then I gotta start the the encoding process. You know how long that takes? In fact, for most videos, it takes real time. So, for example, <laughs> let's say I played for five hours today. Now I need to run <laughs> five hours of videos through a video converter. So I can't just give that content to Machinima. I have to spend ten hours of work. Ten hours of work, guys. Ten hours of work. Five hours of video content. And for some people, they might say, that's not a big deal. Everyone's used to video conversion. Everyone's used to video editing. Uh-huh. Just like people are going to tell you in three years from now, everyone's used to direct capture. They submit their videos, but uh -huh. I'm different from everyone else, and that's... Uh, I'm stupider. Get it straight. My point. That's what I've been trying to get across to everyone. Number one, it's my hobby. I don't have... A monstrous amount of time to focus on it because it's not my job. And Machinima is trying to make that more than just your hobby, but you were too stupid to accept that? And number two, the way that I make videos, the way that I make my playthroughs is rapid fire at a pace where I'm done with the game within a couple <laughs> of days. 
Yeah. I don't give a shit what's put out. I just got to put those videos out. Get it straight. I have to constantly be editing and converting my footage. It's not going to happen. So, for example, Spider-Man, which I finished on Friday last week. I started on Tuesday last week. I wouldn't have finished on Friday. I would have ended up probably playing Spider-Man for over a full week. Maybe even into the time now that I'm supposed to be starting Halo Reach tomorrow. Dude, do you, why? Because you're watching the encoding happen? You're just watching the bar? And that... No, at this point, Bill Brasky, he's still working at Sikorsky. I don't think he's had the, the, the layoff yet. ...would have been very disappointing for everyone. Everyone wants to see me play the best games. So it's better for everyone, for me, for the viewer, that I don't have to constantly edit and convert this footage. Um, but they didn't want to hear that. I said to them, listen, is there any way around it? Well, you know, no. everyone kind of conforms to what we asked for. Those are our rules. Another rule that they want... Well, it was 2008, though. So he was laid off... What exactly year was he laid off? I'm trying to get the timeline right in my head. Because... Anyways, I'll figure it out as we listen here. This is the beginning and ending of every single video I gave them. They wanted me to get their oh, frog machine. fucking load. Frog Machine, this big lore drop again from Frog Machine. This month is the layoff. Okay, so we're less than four weeks from the layoff. <laughs> well, beginning and ending of every single video I gave them, they wanted me to get their animated fucking logo of Machinima. And it's like, no. Like, if you want to do that... Fine, I'll give you the video footage and you put that on the video. Why do I have to do that? This is We already watched this in the Machinima show, but it's still worth watching again. This is how entitled he thought he was. That's ridiculous. This is uh, Think of it this way. And don't take this the wrong way because in no way do I think that I am anywhere near as entertaining or important. Oh yeah, this is the, this is the talent. This is the talent one. I say a movie star. But I'm the talent here. Okay? <laughs> I'm the talent? Okay. So when the Tom classic. Cruise gets hired and signs Tom Cruise and DSP are the same. A contract to go make a movie, uh -huh. does the fucking person who produces the movie say to him, Oh Tom, by the way, be sure to give us the film and edit all the film f <laughs> What a metaphor. For us and put in all the special effects. He's saying Tom Cruise has to give the film. <laughs> and submit the movie to us. No, they say Tom. You're the talent, you act, and then we do... Yeah, but they also have rules about what he acts on. He can't show up to a war movie as a, a I don't know, a homeless person, right? You can't really do that, can you? They gotta tell him, this is how we operate, and this is how this movie's going. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Tom Cruise doesn't just show up with no rules. I got a movie to do? All right, I've showed up. What do I gotta do? I'm not doing that shit. Uh, you have to wear this uh, this cool superhero suit, okay? I'm not wearing that. What? I'm the talent. I'm not wearing a superhero suit. <laughs> Are you crazy? That's what Phil's doing. <laughs> we put all the ads and the marketing and everything that we need, we'll do ourselves. And it's the same thing. I'm the talent. My, all I'm doing is I'm playing a game and I'm giving my live commentary and jokes to it. That's my... Oh, yeah. Waiting for one of those. Talent. My talent isn't video editing. I never said I wanted to be a professional <laughs> video editor and go make movies. I never wanted to do that. And I have no intention of wanting to do that. I'm not a filmmaker. So for Machinima to put that kind of restraint on me is... They're trying to give you money. 50 likes. We okay. Get 100. Like, you... Yeah. I don't know why people they're trying to give you money, and they're telling you what you have to do to get the money. If you don't want the money, then... <laughs> Ridiculous. And in addition to Don't that, do it then, dude. Seems kind of stupid, right? <laughs> some other constraint. They were oh, we only... We typically don't like videos that are 10 minutes long. We only like videos that are 5 minutes long. And I'm just being hypothetical here. I don't really remember exactly what the terms were. Yeah, yeah, you signed the contract without reading it, so you would know what the uh, you wouldn't know what the terms were. But it was little stupid things like that, and it, it would be something if it was one thing, but it was like thing after thing after thing. And I'm looking at this fucking new contract. I'm like, why didn't they tell me this up front? Why couldn't they? It was you can bet your ass was in the contract. They disclosed this information to me up front. Uh -huh. And again, if I were a kid who I didn't have a full time job, I didn't have a life outside of what I do on YouTube. I might have said, okay, well, big deal. I'll spend the extra time because it might mean I make some money. But the bottom line is, Damn. I don't have that kind of fucking time to waste on these people. And the bottom line is, they're lazy. Oh, Jesus, All double rapid do fire. They want to take their channel, which, by the way, they didn't earn their popularity. They've signed other people to make their channel popular. Ah, uh, that's, that's where the hatred for it is. They're just getting free money in his mind. They're not doing anything. You know, that, that's what it's coming. That's what he's doing. Like, they are just doing, they do nothing. They just get money, okay? Like Tom Cruise, like it's so. In his, let's continue his metaphor. That would be like Tom Cruise having a management company and say, like, well, what are you, what are you doing? You just, you didn't get famous. You don't get, shouldn't get money. I'm the talent here. 
and they want to go go and use my why should i pay you management company i have the talent content to make money for them <laughs> and then the other thing that really pissed me off there's no guaranteed payout meaning it's not like phil we'll sign you a contract and we'll pay you twenty thousand dollars this year as long as you submit 40 uh or 400 videos something like that it's uh -huh. not it's actually view based and yeah, so that's that's the best you are. You don't know it yet, but that's the luckiest thing that could happen for you. And it was like you have to get a certain amount of views, and it's a lot of views, by the way. A lot of views, by the way. It's not so little pittance of views, like a thousand views. It's a shitload of views. Oh, calling a thousand views a pittance. You'd wish you could have a thousand views on every video now. All right, once you get that, we'll give you a base amount of money for that video. And then for every certain number of thousand views above that 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 video gets, we'll pay you another set amount. And don't get me wrong, uh -oh. a lot of my videos that I have put up have gotten way, way, way above what that threshold was to start getting. Ooh, foil real estate lady. Look, that's a nice looking card right there. Look at that foiling. Beautiful. I'm horny as hell. Oh, rare. The rare, rare uh, honey. the rare fly fly. Get me the fuck out of here. This guy's annoying as shit. I want to fuck you right here. Fuck this guy. He's a piece of shit. But anyways. <laughs> hey, but the bottom line is there's no guarantee. Hey. So what is the point of me doing double to triple work on a video? Double, 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 triple work, double, triple. Submitting it to a company who, number one, has no obligation to ever put that video up on their site. And number two, may never even uh, promote that video to the point where it gets the amount of views where I get paid. So for example, let's say, and I'm oh, going to... We're done with these. How many more examples do we need? Let's get. Are we getting Tom Cruise back here? Be honest. Let's say I played Heavy Rain and I uh -oh. given that playthrough to Machinima. Well, guess what? Machinima wanted that playthrough. They actually specifically asked me for it. And as everyone knows who's seen it, it's actually ended up being one of my best playthroughs of all time. No, no, no. By best, you mean most viewed. Let's not get it. Let's not mix that up, okay, buddy? Um, there's no guarantee. That Machinima would have kept it up on their main page. They might have put it up as the main video, you know, for an hour, and then taken it down and put up a Modern Warfare 2 video, and then taken it down and put up another fucking bullshit video. Who would have mm -hmm. seen it? The reason that everyone seen it, saw dude? it was because it was the they were the main videos on my page. So the way that Machinima promotes the videos doesn't really work unless there's a word of mouth factor. I would have basically <laughs> had to convince every single fan, every viewer who goes to my channel to go watch my videos on Machinima. Like you see, so right now you can see that that how why DSP became what he is, what he is today, because even though he's not even worried about money yet, right? He's so caught up on numbers in terms of this case, just about views, you know, and he's so telling everything about it and how it's going to affect his bottom line, you know. It's always about how it's going to affect his money, when even in the time when there wasn't that much money to go about it yet, he wasn't even making real money yet. And he's sharing everything, and his only yeah. thing he's worried about is how it's going to affect how much money he gets, you know? And he's just telling everything. He, yeah, that's Amron, you're correct. He's been Mr. Views the whole time. Cinema and hope and pray that, that they all go over there, because I would have never hit the threshold of viewers that they wanted if they didn't. So it would have been a complete waste of my time, and it would have, again, it would have broken up the playthrough. It would have been twice his amount of parts, which everyone gets frustrated on when a playthrough's too many parts. And the too any parts? The gin's hitting hard here. Twice as amount of parts, which everyone is... 60. Again, we're going for 100, uh, guys. I don't hear this Good. clearly. Please like the stream. And, of course, all of the support is greatly appreciated. Frustrated on when a playthrough's too many parts. And too the quality parts. overall would have been lower because it would have taken me way longer to finish the playthrough. It would have had to have all this bullshit editing. It would have been stupid. Bullshit editing? He means put an intro card in. That is bullshit editing, just to be clear. So... I'm glad I didn't do what they wanted me to do. I'm glad I didn't give in. I'm glad I decided to be an individual. And you know what? I decided to be an individual. So what? I, didn't, I'm not, I don't make a lot of money doing what I'm doing right now. Let me tell you this. I appreciate every donation that I get. All of them go towards equipment and things for my videos. Uh -huh. And all the, the, also the, the merchandise that people buy. And people who go and, you know, they're nice enough to go on my partner channel and watch those videos and click the ads and things oh. like that. Click the ads, dude. Click the ads. I never said that. Click the ads. Click the and, ads, guys. You know, they're nice enough to go on my partner channel and watch those videos and click the ads and things like that. Anything that I make off of this, I'm extremely appreciative of, and that's all. I'm not looking to become rich or make this my life. Ah, so, I'm not looking to make this my life. Oh, oh, Just do stuff. All I have to really say is fuck you, Machinima. Hey! 
four months later, you're going to sign with them because you realize it's stupid not to. Because you pissed me off. Fuck you, Machinima. I signed your contract, and then when I learned the rules of the contract, fuck you. <laughs> that's, the, that's what he's doing here. He signed the contract. Never forget that. He, he signed the contract, finally read the contract, and then didn't like what the contract said. I think that's the real truth, actually, you know? But <laughs> even in Phil's version of it, it's still horrible. For, it still is a horrible look for a... Business major, am I right? <laughs> Valedictorian, right? You disrespected right? me. You lied to me up front. Disrespected you by offering you a job and saying, "Here's are the here are the rules of that job." You tried to get me to sign the contract quickly. Then you already signed the contract, sir. You, 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 they tried to get you to sign the contract quickly. Well, in any case, you signed it. So whose fault is that? They sprung all these terms and conditions. On that you sprung huh? these terms and conditions on me. Oh, hey, those were in the contract, sir. We assume you might read that. On me. You didn't want to work with me. I offered to give you my videos if you had put that editing and stuff on yourself. You refused. And now what happened? Uh -huh. Your channel, Machinima Respawn, which you want Big up, 70 likes. Me to be a major part. We'll do a celebratory bubble blow. That would be swell if you could do that. And now what happened? Your channel, Machinima Respawn, which you wanted me to be a major part of the launch of, now has OG. Five billion fucking Modern Warfare 2 videos, and nothing else is successful at all on that channel. <laughs> yeah, because those so are pretty. Congratulations. Those are on fire right now. For fucking yourself and signing all the no talent who got you zero fucking additional viewers, and now you have a two channels of all Modern Warfare 2 instead of just one. <laughs> Congratulations. Good for you. So, that reminder they were just trying to give him more money than he was getting then. That's all he needed to do, guys. That's all they Machinima wanted to do. <laughs> That's the story with Machinima. That's why I'm never going to work for those guys unless... Four months later, he signed with Machinima, as Frog Machine pointed out. Let's hear that rant again real quick. For you. So, that's the story with Machinima. That's why I'm never going to work for those guys unless they change their minds and actually decide to work with me, which they didn't. were not willing to do before. <laughs> work with me. <laughs> work with me by means don't make me do anything. I want to do exactly what I'm doing now and then make more. So until you can make that happen, don't talk to me. And, uh, and that's that. So <clears throat> well, there we go. That's that. <laughs> Phil doesn't read. Big up Smith Bear says Phil doesn't read. He doesn't know until told. Yeah, I'm sure that I'm sure they gave him the first contract that he signed and they like just reminded him of the things that was on that, you know, and that was the problem, you know, because he didn't read it the first time. He's like, wait, huh? A bunch of questions to go, but I know that was a long explanation. A lot of people wanted to hear that explanation. A lot of people wanted to? You mean the person that asked that? So let me split the video here, and when I come back, we'll do part two of this. Six Gout Crystal, it's a Gundam right there, top, top level. This inbox edition. All right, fuck out of here. That's the first half of that one. Now we have the hat on, so get ready for the hat. All right, welcome to part two. All right, welcome to part two of this uh, edition of DSP's inbox. Um... Pretty cool, huh? This is a souvenir that I got when I was down in Tennessee for the Super Battle likes, everyone. Oh, the first hat. That's the goal for the night. The first hat. This is, we were watching history. The first hat. Looks great. Look at that. Very cool. All right, welcome to part two of this uh, edition of DSP's Inbox. Um, Very cool. Pretty cool, huh? This is a souvenir uh -huh. Oh, yeah, definitely. That's the word Tennessee I would use. Pretty cool. Qualifiers back in July. Very I cool. I haven't really worn it around anywhere or worn it anywhere, but I'm sure there'll be some use for it in future videos and things like that, and... Hell, I just think it's pretty cool to have a real authentic Stetson cowboy hat. And it is the Stetson. It's an actual buffalo uh, felt. It's not that <laughs> buffalo felt. That fake imitation crap. And yeah, it's not fake imitation, dude. You don't find these at Walmart, all right? This is Stetson, motherfucker. Don't ever forget it. And what the guy told me, this is going to last. Oh, what the guy told him? Yeah, you mean the salesman that upsold you to probably $400 t cowboy hat? Yeah, that guy. What did he, say? What did he tell you? Uh, felt. It's not that fake imitation crap. And... From what the guy told me, this is going to last quite a while because Stetson's a really, really good name brand hat, so. <laughs> yeah, the salesman will tell you whatever you need to hear. <laughs> it's going to last you 100 years, Sonny. Come on, put it on you. Whoa, you look like a real cowboy. Hang on a second. Is that John Wayne? <laughs> you look like John Wayne, young sir. And it feels like, yeah, okay, I'll take this. Well, that's, that's well, hold on while well, I got you here. You might want to try on this extra special deluxe hat, young man. It might help fit you a little better. This one's a thousand dollars though, and feels like, oh man, hold on, I need that. <laughs> you know, that's how he operates in these shops. You don't get it twisted. 
He says, I'll take your finest hat, sir. And then he gets upsell to hell. Pretty cool. Um, so let's get right back to it because I know that Upsold that last to part, hell. I only answered a couple questions, but that last answer was really long. Um, so the next question. Uh-huh. Dear DSP, I know you play many games throughout the year, and you sometimes have no time to work on side projects. Shit. That's mm-hmm. true. Unfortunately, there's some side projects I wanted to work on, and I just can't get to them. Who cares? But have you ever thought of doing a side project for a time when maybe you have some extra time where you can ask the fans for classic or old games to do a playthrough of? So, for example, do a game off of maybe an emulator or one of your classic systems, classic like PlayStation systems. 1, NES, Nintendo 64, etc. And that's from Riley Helmet. Well, that's Riley Helmet. That's a great suggestion. Um, in <laughs> fact, some of my friends have actually. Uh, Who are asked they? Me, Why don't I do like a DSP, uh, an eight-bit DSP or something like that, or a DSP, you know, old-school DSP or something. Like <laughs> eight-bit DSP, old schools DSP. Naming is his strong suit. Like that channel where I play all old-school games and. Cool hat, dude. The matter is, I have a working NES. I have a working Super NES. I have a working Sega Genesis. Baller alert. It's, you know, I have all these old systems that still work, and I actually have some older games. Like, I have DuckTales for the NES, which hey. is fucking amazing. I've got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which is hard as fuck. I never actually beat it back when I was a kid, Ooh, if you can believe it. You um, can believe it. I've got some cool games for the Super NES. I've got some stuff that I could play if I wanted to, so um, it's a possibility. It's a possibility that I end up not only maybe playing classic Summer of Retro coming in high. Games, but I play it on a classic console, too. Um... And actually, I'm going to have this tie in with another question. Oh, God. Because it actually does tie in with a good question here that someone said. Let's see. Oh, let's see. Here we go. It ties into this next question. Hey, DSP, if there's a new game that you're not going to, to, to buy or make a playthrough of, can we send you the game as a donation? So, for example, oh, donation. Are- see, everything's about receiving. <laughs> Mafia 2, both games we I love donations. You play, but you didn't get a chance to buy or. or or play them, can we send it to you as a donation? And I guess what he's asking, this is from Kenny, by the way. Thank you, Kenny. Kenny. I guess he's asking, can you donate, and maybe I'll play it later. The answer is sure. Um, first of all, <laughs> I'm willing to accept any donations. Now, please, I'm not saying just start sending me shit willy-nilly, all kinds of crazy stuff. If you're going to send me something... <laughs> send me right, crazy stuff. What are they going to send you that's crazy? ...by me, and what I'm actually thinking of doing, obviously, unfortunately... Being what it is, I can't give away my real address because you never know what's going to happen with some crazies out there. Uh-huh. But I'm sure I could find a forwarding. But I'll give you my biz- business card. <laughs> I'll give you. I got to change the turkeys. God damn it! We still got the Thanksgiving feeling with that British style reference. Address, or maybe I could um, have it go to say, you know, a PO box that I could maybe take out uh, locally here. And uh-huh. I'd, be, I'd be willing to accept donations. And going along those lines. Like I said, if someone eventually maybe wants to see me play some classic games and you have them, you could donate them for the NES and the Super NES because those games are a lot harder to get your hands on. So, sure, in the future, not only yes, I guess it's both answers are yes. Yes, I would definitely be willing <laughs> both answers are yes. to accept uh, or, or to, to accept donations. In fact, again, I want to thank that person who donated the, the Wii to me because if it wasn't for that, I would have never played Metroid Other M. And uh, also... Yes, I would be more than willing to play older classic games. Okay. This is something to think about. Some food for thought. That's food for thought, okay. dude. Food for thought. Next. Excuse me for one second. Oh, God. Let's try again. Ah. Okay. <laughs> she yeah. sucks his dick. The pasta maker in the house says, Can I offer you hat insurance, Phil? Maybe Geek Squad protection as well? How about hat grease so it fits smoothly on your head? Yeah, you gotta lube it up. It's called hat lube. You rub it around the side, and it just slides right down. <laughs> and he, he definitely bought everything. Could you get, yeah, do you want to get, uh, you know, uh, button insurance on this hat, sir? Oh, yes, definitely. Do you want to get buffalo skin insurance? Because this is made of real buffalo, son. Oh, yeah, I'll definitely get that, sir. Do you want to get some cowboy boots to match with? Oh, definitely. Do you have any New Balance versions? I need some New Balance cowboy boots. Um, next question uh, is from Mike the Swede, so a Swedish fan. Up, and he says, "Hi Phil, I just want to say that the- <laughs> ask him if he works at IKEA. You said it's a lot of Swedish people." I really enjoy the work. Enjoy the work you're doing. Keep it going. And now for the question: Of all the games that you've played through, which one has the best boss fight ever, and why? Um. That really is a wide-reaching question. Because oh, God, we already can't answer these? Can't you just give a single fucking answer? Find that I've been playing games since the Atari. Um, uh-huh. Actually, the first 
home video game that I ever played was Pong. It was actually one of those systems from the 70s that you just plug into, oh. you know, your TV and it was just two fucking white... <laughs> Wait, let me get this straight. You plugged the system into your TV? Hang on a minute. That's crazy. One of those systems from the 70s that you just plug into, you know, your TV and Hang it was just two fucking white bars and a ball going back and forth. And that made... <laughs> All right, so let's get your show the 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 elevator pitch for what Pong is. Watch the very high, <laughs> very good hand grab that TV happened. It was just two fucking white okay, bars, two and bars going back and forth. And that, <laughs> I like the fade away, putting the bars up and down. Basic, and I played all games through the Atari twenty six hundred, seventy eight hundred, the NES, the Super NES, the Genesis. Oh. The I kind of skipped the generation of say like. The Saturn, the Sega CD, those I really didn't play. My that wasn't a whole generation. That was, <laughs> that was still in the second gen. That was still a Super Nintendo Genesis era in my mind. First CD system was the PlayStation One. Yeah, that was the that was the next era. Um, and then going along with that, the Nintendo sixty four, and then as we got to the new generations, the yeah, never had any benefit. Yeah, definitely grew up poor. By the way, tough tough neighborhood. You know, didn't have any money for anything. And got all the systems though, all the systems. You got all the systems. You know, you got a system. Now all the modern system. Xbox, I did have an Xbox. Actually, I had the, got the PlayStation 2 way before I ever got an Xbox, simply because a lot of the fighting games were out on PlayStation 2 way before they came out on Xbox. So, and then, you know, the modern system. So, I guess, thinking about all the games that I... Who cares? Can you just tell us your favorite boss fight? It's Come on, man. I've played, and I mean, uh -huh. I'm talking... We're, Fighting games, shooting games, role-playing games, um, you know, <laughs> adventure games, action games. We don't need the genres. Puzzle games. I mean, there's been a lot of really good boss battles. Um, Shut the fuck up! What the fuck? Hang you on, know, boss battle? Okay, well, now I gotta think about all the different game types. What are you thinking? RPG? Yep. Adventure game? Yep. Fighting game? Yep. <laughs> we don't need to hear all the genres. <laughs> I mean, one of the ones that comes to mind that is always going to stay ingrained in my head is... Uh-oh. I wonder what this could be. Okay. I know some of I was going to do a poll, but some people might have seen this. I wonder if he's going to go... I, I bet he goes, like... I'm guessing myself, because I've not seen this, so I don't remember it. Maybe I have. I'm thinking he's going, like, Ganon. I, I'm guessing Ganon in some form here, because, like, it's the most basic bitch kind of boss you could choose. Or Koopa. Okay, give me two. Can't Ganon or Koopa, the King Koopa, or Wart or whatever. That's my guess. The end of Resident Evil 1 when you have oh, to fight I'm way the off. Tyrant because you fight the guy way and off, way off. invincible. You, the <laughs> rocket launcher comes down. You hit him with like 10 rockets. This guy is still a fucking die. <laughs> Big up Jasper the Cat in the house. Doing good work over there. Bye Jasper Corner. Get wet fuck to the disposal. You're like, Jesus, maybe you can't win. Maybe this game, you know, back then, again, unless you were... Uh, you know, really into the gaming magazines and things like that. You might, you didn't even necessarily know how the game ended unless you went on the internet and cheated because you were on fucking AOL and you were a loser. Ah. But, um, <laughs> unless you were on AOL and you were a loser? What? Ended unless you went on the internet and cheated because you were on fucking AOL and you were a loser. But what? Whoa, AOL taking shade. A Why was AOL losers? Oh, because you're cheating? Is that what he's going for? I didn't get that vibe. I mean, he was an AOL user. We've covered his AOL news groups on the Density Scrolls. Well, how the game ended, unless you went on the internet and cheated, because you were on fucking AOL and you were a loser. Okay. But, um, so I think AOL users and cheaters are equal in their, in their, I don't know, <laughs> their badness. I was on AOL the whole time, too. But, um, oh, there he goes. He yeah, I mean, it. I just remember thinking, does this guy ever die? And finally, I killed him the, after like 10 tries. I was like... Holy shit, thank God I finally killed him. That was pretty epic because that whole game was epic. Let's face it, that game just created a whole new genre of gaming. It was extremely original. You know, Even though the controls sucked, it actually added to the horror aspect of the game because you're like, damn, if I were really there, I'd run the fuck away, but I can't get my yeah, character that's a good point, The controls sucked dick. So it was uh -huh. pretty funny. Um, oh, so it's controls fought again. Okay, but overall, 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 I would have to say, we didn't even answer if you were to ask me what was the best boss fight ever, yeah. I would probably say... How many that... minutes did it take to get here? Holy shit! Did he say pretty funny? They're all... All sucked in! So it was pretty funny. Um... Okay, I got it. Not overall, 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 I would have to say... If you were to ask...
asked me what was the best boss fight ever, I would probably say... Oh, my God. <laughs> I need to if die. You talk comedy factor, like the oh. funniest... Oh, yeah. When I think of bosses, the first thing that comes to mind is comedy factor. Very normal human being here. That's my first thing I think about is what's the comedy factor? <laughs> Yo, what's a good boss fight? Hold on. Let me think about the comedy factor first. Are you serious? That if you want to talk comedy factor, uh -huh. like the funniest boss fight, yeah, yeah, would yeah. have to be Ultros from Final Fantasy VI. Oh, yeah, because Ultros. this guy shows up multiple times in the game. Every time he's talking shit, he's acting like an asshole. And uh -huh. he's funny as hell, too. And he's just so out of place. A, a talking octopus, you know, it just totally... The rest of the oh, game is pretty one. serious, but this yeah. one talking oh, octopus yeah. is just acting really weird. And, um... Oh, yeah, that was... And he goes, Holy yeah. shit. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Dude, I'm an alcoholic. This is Sparta! Yes! The best! Baltic bro in the house. Big ups, man. Somebody just feel like punching his face. He has a very punchable face. Oh, yeah, you can say that. <laughs> Back near the end of the game, too, you have to fight him again. You're like, I can't believe I have to fight this guy again. Unbelievable. But uh, if you really want me to say what I think my favorite boss... Oh, was God, if you, if you really want me to answer the question, how are we still here? This guy again, unbelievable. Uh -huh. But uh, if you really want me to say what I think my favorite boss fight of all time is, would actually again be Final Fantasy VI, and I would have to say... <laughs> I couldn't think of anything better, so I'll just go to the same fucking game. The entire last dungeon. Oh, and the reason God. I say that is because the last dungeon oh, contains man. several high-level even... bosses that you've never fought in the game before. They were all original. They were all interesting. It doesn't even answer the question. <laughs> and because the game actually forced you at that time to break up your party, you never really had your best party with you. Uh -huh. So it really challenged you to figure yeah. out how to beat each of these new bosses mm -hmm. with a party that's not really your best. And then at the end of the game, all your parties regroup to fight the ultimate boss, which is Kefka, uh -huh. who, through the whole game, he was the... Okay, the so you're basically saying your favorite ending of any game ever, but okay. Yes. But now, all of a sudden, he's merging, he's become a god, and he's mer his godlike powers, and he merges with hundreds of bodies to become this giant fucking I just steamed, monstrous thing. Six, and you think still. that's the last boss... But you know better because you know Kefka is such a cocky asshole. Oh. When you defeat the fucking giant mound of bodies at the top, there's Kefka butt fucking naked with angel wings on, looking like that favorite portrait of like, uh, David reaching out to touch God's finger, and he's just like fucking pointing at you to make fun of you. He's like, ah, like okay, fuck. real quick, real quick. Like in my mind, like I remember that game, and like I didn't even notice the nakedness. Did did is that the same experience as you guys? I wonder. Like, I don't think that's even something you're supposed to think about at all. You know, it's not even, like, about that. <laughs> yeah, I don't, like, it's not, trust me, I noticed that shit, you know, like, oh, hot girl, totally, I, I noticed that stuff in games, but, and, like, that's not the case, man. <laughs> it's not, oh, yeah, look, he's not even like that. <laughs> all right, I'll get the game so we don't get out of context. Like, I wouldn't even notice that. <laughs> he has a... A flowing robe. Looks like a beast. He's li living life. Oh, I can't find it, of course. <laughs> Anyways. Oh, here we go. Perfect picture right here. I'll show it to you. We can end this madness. There we go. But fucking naked, dude. What the fuck? But fucking no! naked. <laughs> maybe, he's talking about maybe he's talking about a different phase or something, because I don't remember that well. Anyway, she sucks his dick. This is the butt fucking naked, dude. <laughs> Jenna, Jenna, Jenna. Big up Jasper the cat. I'm generally starting to feel sad for Phil. That being said, is there any path of redemption for Phil? Or should he get a job and disappear? The pa um, well, the path of redemption would probably have to be having to re-enter society in a real way. We'd have a boss and stuff. <clears throat> but it's not going to happen. So no, not really. He can't. You can't change, man. They cannot change. And the farther we go back, the more we see. It's been deeply, it's deeply rooted. And the tree has just grown up since that point. Deeply rooted hate and entitlement. <laughs> you, I'm God now. And the music was awesome. Like, it was the soundtrack. Of that game. My I sister's face is beautiful. Amazing. Big up, Breezy Style. As I shopped after my overnight shift to Zam, I had your ultimate love songs come up on repeat. Famous fucking voice of an angel. You're Mint Hogue and all. Big up, Breezy Style. Thanks, man. This is very meaningful for me. Those, that, Seriously, though. It is fun hanging out on the Friday night watching this stupid shit with you guys. 
You guys are legends. On oh, Saturday night, excuse me. I have no fucking idea how to pronounce his name. Nuobu Wometsuwowodo. Hold on a second. He's make he's taking down the boy. Are you serious? You can't do this. You have no fucking idea how to pronounce his name. Nuobu Wometsuwowodo. And I know I just did him. Did- <laughs> Uematsu-san. I'm so sorry about this. Uematsu-san. <laughs> no Bobo. I got to make a card for this. Uh, a lot of this, this justice there. Injustice. Sorry. Uh-huh. But I did Wait. how to pronounce his name. Nuobu Uometsuwowodo. And I know I just did him did, uh-huh. uh, a lot of this, this justice there. Injustice. I did a lot of, sorry. I did a lot of, I did a lot of disjustice there. Ubo Bobo. Amazing, this composer. Let's see. Yeah, that's a good idea. Let's see what... You, just Nuobu those that I for I have no fucking idea how to pronounce his name. Nuobu wo metsu wo wo. Nuobu wo metsu wo wo. Good idea to, to do the the do his name. I don't know his name at all. U Ubu wo metsu wo wo. And I know I just did him did, uh, a lot of this this justice there injustice sorry but amazing this composer and I just love the music from the game the final boss fights music just from when the boss fight starts you're climbing level by level of this giant monster and then finally you fight Kefka and he's really like God it's just amazing and um, I have to say one of the most epic fights ever still to this day I can hum the entire song I've never forgotten the music it's so catchy. It's so interesting. It's just so epic because it's the final fight of the game. So that's my pick for best boss battle of all time. Did you really have to take 40 minutes to get there? Legitimately took four to nine. Okay, let's see. It took about five minutes to answer that question. Let's see here. And it seemed like an hour. (laughs) This is another good one that I really like. This guy, I'm going to give you the short version. Basically, he says, last year, Ghostbusters, the video game, was created. Black and white Hogan, three silver star. Not bad, Jasper. Not bad. And a lot of people thought, short version. Basically, he says, last year, Ghostbusters, the video game, was created. And a lot of people thought that it was the most successful movie to video game conversion ever. The Mm -hmm. other people had tried to make video games out of movies, and they weren't successful. This one seemed to be a true sequel, only because it had the original writers... You know, the people who were involved in the original cult hit actually made the video game. Original and cult the question hit. is, <laughs> what other cult classic movies would you most want to be turned into video games and why? And that's from Matthew Spurlock. Um, we got Matthew Spurlock. Two things came to mind immediately. The first one was the Back oh. to the Future. Uh oh, here we go. I was gonna pause it, but we already heard Back to the Future. What what else could his other choice be? Like something <laughs> Back to the Future is cool, but I mean, you know. Series. Because here was he another- always chooses those mainstream with the mainstream like so much. He's like, yeah, it makes sense. Kind of basic bit shit. Nothing wrong with Back to the Future. It's awesome, but you know. Another really good series of movies where you never really had a worthy video game adaptation. And let me tell you, I, when I say that, I mean in the United States. Because I don't know if anyone was seen the recent Angry Video Game Nerd video where he. Actually- oh, God. I yeah, know you have. Actually, re reviews the Back to the Future games. But as you've seen, there actually really was a good Back to the Future game, but it was only made in Japan, which makes no butt fucking sense because the Ooh, no, this guy's hard. No butt fucking sense, dude. The, the movies are American, so why would you make the best version of a game for a movie that was made in America? Oh, I, I, hold, hold on a second. What? Future games, but it was seen the recent Angry Video. It really okay. was a good Back to the Future game, but it was only made in Japan, which makes no. Yeah, so that movie is still huge in Japan. What? No butt fucking sense because the the movies are American. Okay, so that Phil doesn't think that anything that happens in America can be enjoyed outside of America and vice versa because that's how he lives, though. I'll tell you that. So why would you make the best version of a game for a movie that was made in America? <laughs> this is. Let's see how much he hates Japan here. So why would you make the best version of a game for a movie that was made in America? (laughs) Fucking morons. Um, Sound good? So yeah, I I say Back to the Future really... And he's the one saying they look like morons. Just want to remind everybody of that. Series had potential. The fact that it's the same kind of characters, but you have three movies to work with. I really think you could make a good game from start to finish. That encompasses everything. 
Fuck. We'll be great guys. Our goal but is what? 100 oh, likes on the stream God. at 90. Bro, we get 10 oh, more likes, please. This, but at the recent Penny Arcade Expo that just ended, I think it was last week, it was actually announced that there is a company working on a Back to the Future game. It's actually going to be more of a Xbox Live Arcade DLC type of a game. And from what they're saying, it's going to be in the spirit of like the secret of Monkey Island. So it's going to be like an adventure game where you travel through time, you're looking for items to solve puzzles. It's going to have tongue-in-cheek kind of humor. But mm -hmm. the coolest thing is that they actually are starting to get some of the voice actors from the original movie. In fact, they already signed Christopher Lloyd. So holy shit. Oh, holy the shit. is actually going to be in a Back to the Future game. Back to See the what future, I mean? Dude. They're going right along with what they did with Ghostbusters, getting the original actors, the original writers to put that together. It seems like this is going in the right direction. So I'm very pleased about that news. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> very pleased. That game. They're saying it's going to be out in winter. So it's probably going to be 2011 very by the pleased. time that comes out. Um, okay. The other game that I really thought about in my head, I was like, what about if they made a Gremlins game? And when I say <laughs> that, that, I mean... Oh. Like, obviously I didn't chose that, but Gremlins is one you could have guessed he might have said. You know, if you listen to him enough for these kind of... Those huge 80s, you know, movies. Like Gremlins, Back to the Future, Ghostbusters, you know. He loves all that shit, man. <laughs> Gremlins is awesome, but... A real, like, you know, a current day Gremlins... Oh, Ghost Brown time. We got Stay Puft Marshmallow Man in there. Good, Bill Brasky. Game, and it could actually be done very seriously. Maybe you could do it from, like, the perspective of Gremlins 2, where you may be a worker in this, uh, Ooh. this clamp time. Oh, we got, we got Steven Spielberg side Phil coming out here. I don't know if anyone who saw Gremlins 2, but basically the story is the Gremlins get loose inside this giant utopian uh, tower in New York City where basically this guy has television studios, uh, botanical gardens, uh, all kinds of amusement. Um, <laughs> amusement. Businesses. <laughs> amusement. I like <laughs> Just throws out amusement. What other things do they have? Amusement. <laughs> Uh, all kinds of stuff in his tower, and his name is Clamp, and he's like a—he's supposed to be like a Donald Trump type of a, a character. Ooh, and I Donald thought, Trump style character. Imagine if they actually took that and s instead of making it cartoony, they actually made it scary. Like make it a survival horror game where you're just a worker and you have to find all the characters from the movie and team up with them to try to get items and things to get by these monstrous uh, uh, gremlins that are in here. And remember in that movie, that was when they had all these cool mutations. Like they had a spider gremlin, a bat gremlin, an electric gremlin, and they could be like bosses in the game when you uh -huh. try to get off the oh, level. Man. And they get what to the elevator, ideas. you gotta beat the electric gremlin. You gotta figure out how to do what it. What an idea machine. And there's a big, you know, big effects <laughs> boss battle. Uh -huh. I think that would be Big effects boss battle. I love those big effects boss battles. Really cool. Um, and I'm surprised that they haven't done anything like that. It seems like a lot of the old movie franchises are coming. Dude, for this hat, we just leave it alone, man. The grease being spread through this new Stetson hat is un unreal. Back, and what I'm actually kind of thinking is maybe... Write down this idea. Yes, L Sandwich, write this down, all right? There's effect-style bosses, and you do it like Gremlins 2 or something. We're waiting for a Gremlins reboot. Which might a reboot. Yeah, it's going to be a reboot. Actually happened, considering that Gremlins was made by <laughs> Steven Spielberg. It was actually a successful movie series, and it made a lot of money. And since, you know, Hollywood has absolutely <laughs> no fucking talent or originality anymore. Oh, oh, he wants to get hired. Steven Spielberg, listen up, okay? This is DSP's inbox, and you need to be listening. I got a great idea for you. Well, it's, it's going to start out in the food, kind of like Gremlins 2. <laughs> I don't know if you even saw that, Mr. Sir Spielberg. <laughs> But you're basically going to be fighting gremlins and, like, this water and shit. And then this affects bosses, okay? Write this down. <laughs> and all they do is reboot the same stories over and over. I uh -huh. wouldn't be surprised if in the next decade we saw another gremlins movie uh -huh. or a reboot of the series. And if That'd that were to awesome, happen... Dude. Stop saying reboot. I'm tired of reboot. You're probably going to see a game tie-in and you might... Ooh, nice pick there. We, got, we, got, we pulled gold here, too, because if you, when his hand recoils away from the pick, you'll see he's still clutching what he's had. He's still clutching his prey. Watch on the left, his right hand. Movie or a reboot of the series, and if that were to... P there's the pick. We're going digging here. The mining starts. Happen, you're probably going to... And I'm going to try to catch it here. See, a game... Uh, let me go back a little bit. See? It still holds. See, he's, see it's st he's still holding his prey there. He knew prey when he saw it, and he got in there. And there it is. Still being in his clutches. And then he's going to rub it on the PJ pants for maximum stickiness. Game tie-in, and you might see something like that. But that was just my idea of a game. Just throw it out there. I think it might be a really good concept. Uh huh. Um, cool concept, dude. I love that. A couple more quick questions. We'll get this done. Almost done here. 
Um, let's see. This question says, Hi Phil, my name's Michael. I was wondering during a video of a YouTube comedian named Jovian 0011G, I don't know, some real weird fucking thing. But anyway. It sounded like numbers to me, sir. I wonder how funny it would be if you would partner for a game playthrough together with him. Because when you think about it, it's a great match. Ooh, okay. This is cool. Let's hear what Phil thinks about, uh, 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 you know, uh, what's it called? Qu you know, qu <laughs> co-oping with other YouTubers. I don't know why I could not say that. The pasta maker in the house says, hat grease purchase confirmed. Easy on and off. Exactly. You got upsold with the grease. It just slides right off and on, bro. You don't need to worry about it. Easy greased. With someone who is funny for his jokes, Jovi, so we must be talking about the other guy, and you put someone who is retarded funny gaming. Ah. So Phil is retarded funny gaming, and the other guy has jokes. How will Phil take this? I think we might have our first parade here. Our first, though, starting slow, honestly. And you put someone who is retarded funny gaming. Okay. So kind of a diss, I yeah. But I think that was a saying, though. You could say that R funny means really funny. Fuck you, Michael Contreras. Retarded funny gaming. What the fuck's that supposed to mean? I'm There's funny. One. I've got funny jokes. Fuck your mother. Anyway. Jesus. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> oh, next we've got... <laughs> totally got him there. <laughs> a question from O.J. Taylor. And he oh, said, big up, O.J. This is another good question. I want your opinion on 3D. In particular, oh, gaming in 3D and 3D television. I know that Killzone 3 is being developed in 3D, and there are supposedly more 3D games on the way. What's your opinion? Personally, I have my doubts, and mainly because at the moment it seems too expensive. Firstly, you have to buy a 3D, oh, or a 3D TV, yes. yes. Then you have to buy a pair of glasses, and then you have to buy a special DVD player. Or yeah, so keep in mind that f whatever his answer it is here, Philip would end up buying a 3D TV when he moved to Washington. So keep that in mind as we hear his answer about 3D. Gameplay that can support the 3D. Uh -huh. So what is your opinion of all this 3D hoopla? And again, that's from O.J. Taylor. Um, I don't know if anyone realizes this, but 3D has existed for quite a long fucking time. This is not... <laughs> 3D, the dimension, has existed for like forever. So I don't know why this is such a big deal, okay? Nothing new. It's just a new kind of 3D that they're trying to push down people's throats because it's not slightly as bad as the last version. It's not slightly as bad? 3D that they're trying to push down people's throats because it's not slightly as bad as the no. last version. Which It's not slightly as bad. And he's looking like he's hit the sauce tonight. It's not slightly as bad. You need to have colored glasses. Um, uh -huh. This is this simple to me. Uh -oh. 3D. Oh, let me burp real quick. He is struggling right now. Um... It's this simple to me. 3D oh, God. is like a rumble pack. It doesn't really add anything to the game experience. <laughs> it's like a rumble pack. It's completely superfluous to the actual plot. It's <laughs> the gameplay, the story of the game. It's not needed. It's just it's completely a kind of a, 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 a little add-on. And <laughs> being that what he says is a very good point, it's very expensive to buy a 3D. <laughs> Western heavens, you got me. 3D TV to get these 3D glasses to get something that's me. compatible with it. It's a hassle right now and it's not worth it. Now, what's uh -huh. to say that in five years it doesn't become super cheap or maybe it's integrated into everything? Well, that would be something different. But the other thing uh -oh. that I completely disagree with is that you still have to wear these fucking glasses. <laughs> no one wants to sit around in their house wearing sunglasses. You look like an asshole. And you don't get to see a clear movie. Whatever. Yeah, you know how important it is how you look when you're watching TV. That's always the time you have to worry about how you're looking. Am I right, guys? <laughs> What's been saying with these 3D movies is, wow, it's really great that they filmed Avatar and Resident Evil Afterlife in 3D, but I can't see the fucking movie. I put the glasses on, the movie's blurry as shit, and then I get a headache after like 20 minutes because your mind's not supposed to be seeing two different versions of the same image to that extent. <laughs> Now he knows how your eyes work. Your eyes shouldn't be exposed to two different versions of an image, okay? <laughs> he added a, a, you don't need two different versions of, uh, and I believe that is true. Uh, he's copying lots of AVGN again. And by the way, the other thing, you ever notice something that what, real what? life really isn't that much 3D? Like <laughs> Did you ever notice 
real life isn't that much 3D. I think that's where we're about to go here. I think that's where we're about to go. Okay? So get ready. I think we're going to learn how real life is not 3D or is not 3D to the extent that he believes other people think. Okay? So let's get ready for this. The pasta maker, yeah, you know it's bullshit. That did sound familiar to me. And uh, AVGN had a short series called You Know It's Bullshit. It'd be like a minute long episodes about shit. And yeah, this probably came right from that. But let's hear how life isn't that 3D, okay? Get ready. By the way, the other thing, you ever notice something that real life really isn't that much 3D? <laughs> like if someone throws a softball at you, do you really see this thing coming at you? Like, no, you see a 2D thing. You can <laughs> Okay, we gotta hear this. Sorry, we gotta hear this again. Hold on. I, we gotta hear this whole thing again. I don't care. Here we go. Same image to that extent. Oh, God. And by the way, the other thing, you ever notice something oh, that real life really isn't that much 3D? Uh -huh. Like if someone throws a softball at you, do you really see this thing coming at you? Like, no, you see a 2D. <laughs> like if someone throws a softball at you, do you really see. <laughs> oh, God. God, do you really see it? Aren't you like that much? Well, what, last time, last time, last time. Like if someone throws a softball at you, do you really see this thing coming at you? Like, no, you see a 2D thing, you get hit in the fucking face. You see a 2D thing and you get hit in the face. <laughs> you see a 2D thing and you get hit in the face. Oh, you see a 2D thing. It's real vision has depth perception to a point, but... <laughs> But not to the point where this 3D movies are trying to push it. So it's <laughs> death perception to a point, but not to the point where this 3D movies are trying to push oh. it. So it's unnatural. It gives you headaches. It's expensive. <laughs> it's an unneeded gimmick. I personally think 3D sucks dick, and that <laughs> it's overrated, dude. That that might be the one of the, that's top five dumbest ever, though, isn't it? It's a 2D thing that just hits you in the face. Oh my god, it's a 2D thing that hits you in the face. <laughs> so when you get hit in the face with anything, it's a 2D thing that just hits you in the face. Oh my god. Alright, I'll put that on Twitter later. Get ready to retweet that shit, man. That's the good one. These people who are trying to push <laughs> this stupid fat down our throat should suck my balls. So, hey. get 3D movies out of the theaters. I don't want to pay $15 to see a 3D movie. I want to pay the regular $10 that you usually rate me to see the movie. Ooh. And uh, I don't care about 3D gaming. You won't be able to videotape it properly. It'll probably be a worse experience because everything will be blurry. Fuck this shit, really. <laughs> Stop worrying about this bullshit technology that no one's asking for and worry about making better plot, better gameplay, and better graphics. Duh! It's the three things that people pay Those fingers, those fingers. So any any ladies in the chat, you might get excited at this one. I apologize, but we got to see the finger technique again. And worry about making better, sorry, ladies. Better plot, better gameplay, and better graphics. Duh! It's the three things yeah. that people pay for, not these stupid <laughs> gimmicks. Uh -huh. That's my little rant about 3D. Sorry. No, oh, that was a great rant, dude. And how 2D things just <laughs> 3D things are just 2D until they hit you in the face. I'm, I'm a rant there. Okay. Oh, well, epic Two more questions and we're done. Number one. Hey, Phil, I was wondering, who do you think is the sexiest chick out of these people? Okay. Oh, I'm down for these kind of questions. I am definitely down. I'm guessing he's going to dodge it, but I'm down for this kind of question to hear what he says here. Like a normal dude has an answer here no matter what. It doesn't mean he doesn't, you don't like your girlfriend. It doesn't mean you don't like your wife. It doesn't mean anything. But let's hear what he's going to avoid this question. Bonnie... Abigail, both from Red Dead Redemption, Madison from Heavy Rain, that chick off of Singularity, <laughs> Lightning and Fang from Final Fantasy XIII, Hephaestus' wife and Athena. Oh, I'm thinking Fang from Final Fantasy XIII. I'm, I'm going to be honest. Well, Wenzel, my opinion is that you need to see professional help because none of those women actually exist. They're just really gaming characters. Told ya. I don't think, I don't think video games are hot, dude. I can't, how can I think they're hot? 
Get out of here. We need to seek professional help because none of those women actually exist. They're just really gaming characters. Uh -huh. And if yep. you're actually sexually, sexy, uh, uh, sexually uh, attracted. Hello? Uh, could you please get the gin out of your mouth here? What? Characters. And if you're actually sexually, sexy, uh, uh, sexually attracted to any of those women, <laughs> you need to seek uh, a psychiatrist or possibly a sex coach. Possibly a sex coach. Yeah, really nailed the landing there on that joke, didn't you, buddy? <laughs> really nailed the landing. You might need a sex coach. It doesn't make sense. It, it, just don't think about it. <laughs> yeah. So the way to dodge those questions, that normal human beings that are, you know, heterosexual <laughs> about women might be able to answer a question without thinking so fucking deeply about it. But you know who we're dealing with here. Someone that is, you know, has the sexuality of a table leg. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Can't even say sexy without getting a little nervous, you know? Sex, 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 sexually. Uh, okay, uh, two more. Actually, letters. two more really quick questions. Uh -huh. The next one I've gotten from about five billion fucking people. And the question okay. is, hey, DSP, can you give me a random shout out on YouTube? I try to make videos and I like a shout out. Can you give me a shout out? Can you mention question. me? Well, let me tell you something. If I uh -oh. give everyone a shout out, whoever asked me for a shout out, Every time a video was made, this is how my video would start. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Here comes the berate. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's DSP, and I just want to give a shout-out to Abigail, Adam, uh, you know, Ash, <laughs> uh, Bob. He was trying to think of names, and he ran out after two, after two, and those two were the ones that were mentioned earlier. He was out. Can you got any names? Okay, Adam, uh, uh, <laughs> Abigail, Adam. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's DSP, and I just want to give a shout-out to Abigail, Adam, uh, you know, Ashley, uh, Bob, Billy, shout out to Bob. Ben, Benjamin, Benjamin Buttons. Like, I'll be here for the next fucking five... Benjamin Buttons. Oh, nice, 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 wait, nice joke you slipped, slipped in there, man. Really good tonight. Really on fire tonight. shout-outs because everyone on the planet is looking for me to give them love when I don't know who the fuck anyone is. And don't get Everyone's looking for me to give them love. Everyone's looking for me to give him love. Because everyone on the planet's looking for me to give him love when I don't know who the <laughs> fuck anyone is. And don't get me wrong. That was very urban style for a second, wasn't it? Everyone's out there asking me to give him love. That's what it sounded like to me. It's very urban style. He did an urban switch there. Benjamin? Benjamin Buttons? Like, I'll be here for the next fucking five hours giving shout-outs because everyone on the planet's looking for me to give him love when I don't know who the <laughs> fuck anyone is. And don't get me wrong, I appreciate you know, my viewers and my fans. But don't ask me for something silly like that. No, I can't Bray. give you a shout out because if I give you a shout out, I That's have to Bray. give the other five thousand people who have asked me for shout out shout outs. In which case, I'll never make another video. Oh, It'll just be me giving everyone shout outs. Uh -huh. So chill the fuck out. That's a berate. If he didn't say chill the fuck out, we might have a conversation there. When he says chill the fuck out, that's a berate. So that's two tonight. I don't know if we're gonna get to seven though. All right. Last question. Last question, dude. Hey Phil, I have a question for you. Obviously, you enjoy playing games. Have you ever considered, or would you consider, getting into game development yourself? If so, what type of game would you be interested in developing? Thanks. Keep up the good work from R. Fletcher 90. In a nutshell, I've had two really good, uh, at least in my opinion, ideas for games. One of them would be a fighting game where the fighters are actually professional fighting game players. So it would be like, you'd really be able to do Daigo versus Justin Wong, and maybe Justin would fight like Rufus, and Daigo would fight like Ryu, because that's his main character. And maybe you could pick, like, Bro, what's his idea? Hold on, I need this again. So it would be like, you'd really game where the fight, uh, at least in my opinion, ideas for games. One of them would be a fighting game okay, fighting where game. the fighters are actually professional fighting game players. So it would be like... <laughs> <laughs> on paper, now say Phil might be a flat earther. You know, he, I bet there's some things he believes. I know Jenna believes in flat earth, I believe, from one of her Instagram posts, but I don't know about Phil. You'd really be able to do Daigo versus Justin Wong. So, I mean, oh, so he, this is what he wants, by the way. His big idea is to get pro fighting game players to be in a fighting game. Because, yes, uh, fighting games are huge and they're amazing. But if you want to talk, if you want to make the, all the you players. Thank you much for the engagement today. I appreciate it. All the it. players are real fighting game players? Maybe Justin would fight like Rufus and Daigo would fight like Ryu. I mean, that's cool for like a DLC character. But, I mean, how many of those are going to be? Because that's his main character. And maybe you that wasn't a very good one. It kind of sucked, I'm not going to lie. Big ups, 100 likes. Thanks, everybody. 100 people across the globe who are the best fighting game players in the world. You want 100 of those? Holy shit, man. 
it's not a benefit to have a hundred characters in a fighting game either. That means you just have eighteen. Like you have really have tw- you have really have twenty characters, but there's ten uh, like ten sets, you know, and they all do the exact same thing. World, and you can each have them fight in their own respective favorite fighter styles, or maybe even have them do their own custom style. And of Whatever. course, the game would be two D. It would have to be two D. Have to be two D. Why would you? There's no three D. So why do you even? Why are we even talking about this? Because everyone knows the best fighters made have always been two D and always will be two D. So. Ooh, <clears throat> scathing. That's commentary. my idea for a fighting game. Um. Get I fucked. do have an idea for one more type Tech of game. game. Get fucked, dude. Fuck out. And in this dude. type of game, what's the game? You'd basically do is it would be kind of like a, maybe it would either be like an alien invasion plot, or maybe it's like an end of the world biblical shits going on, or something's <laughs> just going wrong in the world, and so. Okay. It's very, very unique so far. What's next? It's I would have like a central location, so maybe like it starts in New York City. Oh, okay, very, very unique again. You New York City. Man, it's probably the first movies ever is New York as the backdrop. And what happens is all these people from around the globe kind of go to New York to try to save the world. But think <laughs> of it this way. It could be like... The big, Call it Ellis Island. Biggest team-up amalgamation of games ever. So like... Team-up amalgamation of games ever. It would be like the Marine from Doom 3, Duke Nukem, fucking... You- all right, so this is like... This is what happens when you give a, you know, tell a middle schooler to write a movie plot. And, like, what happens is, like, all right, well, there's 20,000 planets, and they all blow up each other. And then we got the president. He's, he's driving one of the ships. And then there's 14 more aliens that come in and just do whatever without – who cares about story? Just however much action you can put in there, do it. And that's what he's doing right the fuck here. So, like, it would be, like, <clears throat> the Marine from Doom 3, Duke Nukem – Fucking, you know, McTavish from the Modern Warfare series. Uh-huh. You know, every FPS per- person from every FPS, FPS game ever is person. in the game, and you can play as them, and if you pick them, you actually get to play in the style of their respective game. So if you're McTavish, <laughs> you're, you're... So you want just... You want a game that has every character ever. Your soap, you could actually have, like, perks and shit, like, from Modern Warfare. If you're the Doom Marine, you can have the BFG. If you're, you know... Uh, a guy from another FPS game, you would get whatever, like Half Life, maybe you get the gravity gun uh-huh, or something oh, yeah. like that, or Portal. Yeah. Maybe you can play the girl from Portal, and you don't have a weapon, you just get the Portal gun, but you have to find ways to get through the stage with the Portal gun. So, oh, and it would be co op, too. That would be the other cool thing. <laughs> so, it's co op, but also motion controls, and also it's fully translated in every language on Earth. I think is that it could be like a four player co op where four different styles of gaming could all be incorporated to try to. What? Talking the about stage. I mean, you'd have co-op stages. This is the worst game ever. That require you to do certain puzzles because of that gameplay style that you've selected. Uh. So, I think that's a really cool idea. I also, <laughs> if you just throw every idea together, it doesn't make it cool. Okay, I want to make it anime, dude. It has all different kinds of anime. Attack on Titan is there. One Piece is there. Slam Dunk is there. Fruit Loops is there. Everyone together, and then Sailor Moon's here. And here's the thing: you could, every episode can take parts of each other series to come in their episode it's really cool i mean i think it's a great idea but what do you guys think dragon ball is also part of it of course yes so no it'll never fucking happen but just trying to get all those companies to license their characters to all be in the same game will never happen but uh-huh. that's kind of like my again it's like an all-star if you had a fighting game it would be like <laughs> the best fighting game players from around the world get to play in their own favorite styles well same thing if you could have an fps game where everyone could play in their own favorite style and pick their favorite character i think that would be pretty cool Never gonna happen, unfortunately. So yeah, hold on. What was the question? Anyway, I see you guys pointing. He didn't answer the question. So what was the question? Up next is Halo hold Reach on. starting tomorrow, which is the right here. Gaming. I don't know if anyone realizes this. Oh, here 3D, in particular, gaming in 3D and 3D television. What's your opinion? First, 3D or, or 3D TV? Yes. Right here, across that. the globe, who are the best fighting game players in the world? Shell, I have a two really good. Uh, if so, what type of game would you be interested in, in developing? Okay. Thanks. We'll get to what kind of game would you be interested in developing was the st- was the start of this whole thing. So he didn't answer that question. Don't get the fuck out Trying of here. Trying to get all those companies and it's their Shut own up. favorite, their favorite character. I think that's it for another DSP inbox. Up. up next is Halo Reach starting tomorrow, which is the... Um, Sorry, pushing the grease down. It makes a sound. 12. 
13th, I want to say. No, 14th. Tomorrow is the 14th of September 2010. Halo Reach will start. I'll start with the campaign, obviously, play through that, and then probably this weekend I'll be trying out the multiplayer. Uh -huh, and yes, I will oh, actually awesome. be doing the multiplayer of oh, Halo can't wait Reach. For that. It's actually uh -huh. going to happen because yeah. I actually did like the multiplayer of Halo 3. Who so cares? looking forward to this. And then keep in mind that Sony Move comes out this weekend uh, as well. So look out for that's that. It's going to be great. Um, Can't wait. So that's it. DSP. Thank you. I hope I answered a lot of your questions. Again, check me out on Twitter. They call me DSP yes, eight of them. for updates on what's going on during this season. And feel free to keep sending me your Please questions hit at the DSP end. inbox at hotmail.com. That's okay. how you can get your question to me. And maybe I'll answer it in the next DSP inbox video. So raise great. your steins. <laughs> he almost failed the pickup here, by the way. Watch this hand. This is gin. Gin-induced... Uh, Mobility. Question to me, and maybe I'll answer it in the next DSP inbox video. Bam. So, <laughs> maybe that, maybe his maybe his depth perception does not exist because he couldn't even pick up this cup. Watch this. Um, that's how you can get your question to me. Ready? And maybe I'll answer it. Hang on, where I just see a two D cup here. So hang on. Next DSP inbox video. Bam. So raise your steins, <laughs> and I'll see you guys later. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Thanks, that game. Yeah. All right. So Let's do one more. Here we go. Right here. We'll go, hopefully we're finished by 10. Let's rock, rock and roll. Second, second episode here. We're going forward in time. Uh, just a few... Yeah, two weeks almost, exactly. It's two weeks later from this one, we have this. We're back in our previous environment here. Sounds hype. You ready? Yeah. Oh, this is the same environment, just brighter and, and higher angle, which is not working, by the way. The other angle was better, but here we go. It's DSP here. Uh, the next uh, version of DSP inbox. Uh, I got my thinking hat on, and uh, I have much improved lighting from the last last time. Oh, so that means someone commented on the lighting, and he got pissed, so now he has much improved lighting, dude. Actually, I was so disappointed with the lighting last time. Uh -huh. I ran out and bought a new uh, lamp for this room, so that when I do these videos, I'd be able to... Yeah, have, brought a new lamp, dude. ...have a lot better uh, lighting, especially... Derek would definitely be into this video, by the way. Great great call, Eileen. ...for this desk and everything. I think this is a nice backdrop for me to sit and kind of consider... And think and answer questions. So yeah, we need uh, more considering a and thinking. Different things we did this time. First of all, I did take all of the questions from my email address DSP inbox at hotmail dot com, uh -huh. and know. I sorted out the best ones. But also, what we're gonna do from now on, I think it's a really good idea. Is whenever I'm gonna do one of these videos, which I'm gonna try to do every two to three weeks, maybe you know a couple minutes before I actually sit down to do the video, I'm gonna put an update on my Twitter account. To basically let everyone know I'm going to do it. And I'll take a couple really quick questions from Twitter as well. So today I actually took five or six really quick questions. Oh, so here, he did that on Twitter like this. Okay, I'm currently amassing questions for tonight's DSP Inbox video. If you have one and can tweet it right now, I might answer. Uh, and again, these tweets have no responses, so I can't even see, like, what they did. But there we go. That was the response. Said, okay, I have enough questions for DSP Inbox tonight. Thank you all. I'm going to start filming soon. That was the upgrade. That was the update. Questions from Twitter, and I'll just rattle off really quick answers, whatever's like at the top of my uh, uh, the top of my head. You know, when I go through, it won't be anything in depth, but I think it's a pretty cool little Twitter rattle uh, rattle rattle off to do. Um, <laughs> Twit twit Twitter rat rat yeah, rattle I think off. It's a pretty cool little Twitter rattle uh, rattle rattle off to do. Um, and for those that don't know, my Twitter account is they call me DSP. So okay. that's how you can find me on Twitter. Sounds good. Sounds good. It's pretty cool because I usually too. do put updates on the videos that i'm going to make things that are going on on a daily basis so it's really it's a good way to keep in the know good way to keep in the know yeah my channels on youtube without further ado let's uh let's take a look at some of the questions gee uh, hopefully i'll i'll uh get myself into as much trouble as i did the last time i made one of these videos uh what was that about <laughs> So anyway, the first two questions go hand. I wish I could check that, but um, the original videos aren't online anymore, so I can't even check the comments. Sadly, both. I'm not sure and what he's talking about there, though. What got him in trouble? The, and then consider an answer. The first question is. What did he say? I'll kind of read them. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, the first two questions go hand in hand, so I want to kind of read them both. Okay. And, uh, two and questions. Consider right? an answer. The first question is. One. Um. Hey Phil, I'm not sure if I asked this or not. But I was wondering what you thought of, I, I, and I apologize because I didn't write it down properly, it said SSHOPK, he's another person who does video game playthroughs with live commentary ah. on, X, on Xbox, I'm sorry, on Xbox Live, on uh, YouTube. Um, he says, sorry to bug you, I realize this might not be important enough to be in one of your inbox videos, but I felt that it would be important to ask 
because I've been a longtime fan of both his and you. Okay. I hope you both succeed regardless of what happens. Sorry if I asked this already. Yeah, great point, by the way, Weston. They are handwritten. He doesn't even print them out. He is hands writes that he hand writes them. <laughs> and then in addition, here's another question from oh, someone God, else. Another one. Okay. Um, let's see. Thirteen My questions question so far. This. Would you consider working together with another walkthrougher, playthrougher on a game or maybe a project? Perhaps you can work with someone like Bash One Two Three Four Nine. I say this because both of you are funny in your unique ways, and I'm sure your fans as well both as both of you are funny. Games, there's a little bit of grammar missing there. Would be eager to see two gaming legends collab. Did you have to say that? Little gaming missing there. Yes, he is. There's a little bit of grammar missing there. Thanks for pointing that out. That's not a berate, but just fuck up. Let it go, dude. Um, interesting question. Uh, the beef is really honest with everyone, and I said this before, but it's worth mentioning again in an inbox video. I really don't spend a lot of time on YouTube watching videos. I don't. I don't even watch my own videos on YouTube. Um, I'm too busy either playing games or with. Oh, that was a shirt pick there. I need to get my gunshot sound effect for this. I really want to get that. In fact, I'm gonna do it now because I don't want to forget it. I need the gunshot sound effect for the shirt pull. He does do those every once in a while. <laughs> it's very funny every time. <laughs> All right, I'll make it manually here. For with work to be sitting around on YouTube. So have I heard of these people before? Absolutely. Um, I actually believe that this Ready? that guy S S H O P K. Again, I apologize that I don't know his full name because I, I again I don't watch these videos on YouTube. You could have just wrote uh, down the question. I believe dude. he's actually contacting me before to ask me if I wanted to do. You could have just printed the question correctly, then hit the full name. Sorry, I don't understand this guy. Collaboration project. I missed the I missed the poll, by the way. And the bottom line is this. Um, oh, bottom I line. Sorry. What I do is really on the fly. It's not really time consuming. It's not planned out ahead of time in most most parts. In fact, for example, a lot of the footage from this past weekend with me, with John Rambo, with my other friends Howard and Jerry uh, wasn't friends? planned out at all. It was just kind of spontaneous, calling people. Hey, you guys want to come over and play some games? They came over. And voila, you know, genius is born. Uh, and hilarity ensues. <laughs> genius apparently. is born. Um, but yeah. Like <laughs> genius is born when we play games. These are the Beatles. When they get together, magic happens. Don't you ever forget it. Uh-oh, not now. Please. It's too early. Don't do this. Oh, no. Raisin. Oh, broke it in half. Raisin broke it in half. Like, if, if there ever were to be a, a big project where maybe a, multiple playthroughs wanted to do it, I guess I would be open to the idea. My only problem would be that obviously... What? That involves a little bit of work? ...like that to work. Logistically, I mean, being that when we don't really live in the same areas of the country, it would be difficult. Like, for uh -huh. example, I live in Connecticut. I don't know where these guys live. I'm sure it's not Connecticut. How would you even think you know about that? I'm sure it's not Connecticut. How would you have any iota where they live? You have no clues. Why would you even say that statement? You know why you would? Because he knows he's not going to do it. So he's trying to make it sound harder to do than it really is. Let's not, I mean, that's all we're doing here is explaining why we can't do it. Uh, either getting all of us together in the same room to do it, which obviously would be ideal because we could work off of each other um, and kind of plan out what we're trying to do. Uh -huh. um, one person actually proposed to me like stream, like, like doing a Skype kind of a deal while you're playing the game. I'm not a fan of that simply because it's not live. You end up talking over each other. It sounds phony. And as you know, for me, I like sounds actually phony. sitting there to be there. Sounds phony. Play the game and give my <laughs> live reactions to it. I don't uh -huh. want to do voiceovers or anything like that. So yeah, that's I don't want to do extra work. You know. Honestly, I wouldn't probably consider doing anything like that. Now, if anyone ever had an idea of a game that would be like a great game to do, like a double or triple commentary on, I mean, yeah, I consider it. But I don't even can't even think of a game like what kind of a game would lend yourself to be like that i don't know what game would lend yourself to be like that oh um mm -hmm. so yeah is it a possibility absolutely is it something that i'm really thinking about right now not really like i said i'm pretty so busy with everything else that i'm doing uh so busy, dude. doing this stuff non-stop that i don't have time to really think about collaboration but it's, i'm not saying that i'm ruling it out it is a possibility for the future okay, um, probably not yeah. okay got it the next question um uh, let's see i really appreciate your videos and your attitude toward the gaming industry my question is this, as okay. a Go ahead. My oh, question this is a good one. As a, this is a good one. hardcore gamer, have you ever played or rather been enslaved by the World of Warcraft? If so, what was your experience oh, with the Warcraft a fans. popular game and its gaming developer Blizzard Entertainment? The reason I'm curious is because I know you have a lot I'm to dented. say about Bungie. I'm dented. I had to think of a question game. to ask you, my king. So I'm wondering if you have a story behind World of Warcraft as uh -huh. well. Keep up the great work, and that's from Saruman the Grey. Saruman the Grey, shout outs, dude. 
All right, so remember, the, the lore we learned on Thursday, actually, was that he used to play with his Best Buy friends. Uh, and he played for a few months, uh, three months, I believe, and then he played with the Best Buy guys for a month or so. So let's see what he says here. Um, good question. Uh, and in general, I'm not even just going to address World of Warcraft, but MMOs uh, in general. Okay. I, <laughs> I actually... Change the, the question all you want. I ever played was EverQuest. And I played oh, EverQuest, big school. ups. And at that time, that game was revolutionary. There was nothing really like that. Uh, the first 3D heavily online multiplayer... 3D doesn't exist, so stop bringing it up. Game, and it was a role-playing game. Playing game. Um, and I played it for a couple months with my friend, but we kind of got bored with it because at that point it was brand new. I mean, I'm talking the release of EverQuest. That game had a shitload of bugs. I mean, there'd be dungeons and instances... Dude, I'm, I'm just getting real. You didn't even think about bugs, man. Back in that time, you did not think so you'd give a shit about bugs. As you go in... And you fight for three hours, and then you fall through the fucking floor. Your dead body would be stuck in the floor, unable, and you'd be unable to go back and get all of your loot because you can't touch your body because it's in the goddamn floor. I mean, there was some retardedly broken shit in that game Whoa. that came out. But that's to be expected when a game like that is new, and it's revolutionary. Um, after that, the next one that I played, I believe, was actually Final Fantasy XI. Um... And that is very hit or miss. I, I actually had a group of friends that wanted to play it. And once we played it for like a month, we just got so fucking bored. Uh, they got tired of me, so <laughs> they stopped talking to me. Of it, where it was all more like they took ideas from EverQuest and other games and tried to put it together. But just, we didn't like it that much. Um, and it's funny because... They used, took ideas from other games. Oh, kind of like your great game idea, which involved taking things from every single game on Earth? A lot of people did like Final Fantasy XI. But I kind of view it as a failed experiment, almost like, uh -huh, failed you know, experiment. it was a way for them to make money, but, and apparently they did make a lot of money, because here we come, Final Fantasy XIV is coming out the same year as Final Fantasy XIII. Imagine making, make, make, wanting to make money with your product. And it's an MMO, uh -huh. so obviously they did something right there, but I don't know, personally we really didn't like it, and uh, yeah, I did play World of Personally or personally? Something right there, but I don't know, personally we really didn't like it. Per I think he said personally, but there's something weird here. So, obviously, they did something right there, but I don't know. Personally, we really didn't uh, like personally. it. Personally. And, uh, yeah, I did play World of Warcraft. I actually played uh -huh. it twice. I played it when it was brand new for a couple of months. And then, actually, a year or two later, a co-worker of mine convinced me to actually... Let's buy co-worker. And I played it for another several months. Um, I played it for another several months. it was a lot months. of fun, let's be honest. It, it's, it's a kind of game where if you really want to get into one game... You want to focus your time on that game. The game could be pretty rewarding. Uh, a lot of the higher level <laughs> stuff, the unlocks, the raids, instances, yeah. can be it's pretty rewarding, dude. You get this high level. Then there's after you beat a big boss, you got to roll, and then you get to see what number you get. And sometimes you get cool stuff. On, you know, being able to team up with your friends in a more of a social atmosphere, and that's really what that game's about. It's about the social aspect. Yeah. If you're just soloing the game, it's not going to be nearly as fun as if you're teaming up with your friends, uh -huh. bullshitting, having a couple drinks here and there, and playing <laughs> yeah, here and there. You know, strategies and things to try to beat the higher level monsters. Uh -huh. um, but overall, those games, they just kind of lose their appeal to me, especially because, as you know, I like a variety of games. I oh love God, fighting Do we games. need this whole story? I like FPSs. I, I like, like adventure games. games. I like role-playing like games. Like I like a game. whole bunch of different games. Whoa. So for me to invest that much time into just oh, one grease. game... Need drying grease. Grease wipe here. Quick. <laughs> Really, really just, I don't know. Spread yeah, the grease around, boys. Beneficial. Um, and a lot of my other friends who played it disagreed. Spread the grease, put it back. Playing that game hardcore for quite a long time. But for me, I just really didn't get into it that much. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, did I ever play World of Warcraft? Absolutely. Did I like it? I did like it while I played it. But after a while, it was just kind of like more of the same. Like, how much do I possibly want to grind and loot and do the same things over and over? It is addictive. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh oh, it's going to be addictive. I hope this. I hope you don't have an addictive personality. We want to grind <laughs> and loot and do the I same thing over and over. It is addictive. <laughs> That's really the reason why people uh, play it so much. It's uh -oh. such an addictive formula. And there are other games that have come after that. Big Ups Intelligent Counterspell, A Mother's Love. First pull for that card. Seventy nine ninety eight, boys. Such Get it while it's hot. Formula. And there are other games that have come after that. Oh, sorry about that. We're just the grinding and the looting have become ridiculous. Like, for example, Borderlands. A lot of people... Oh, love Borderlands! Game. Big ups to Borderlands. That game just because there was so much looting involved, and it was really repetitive killing to get loot. Um, 
other games similar to that. Um, Borderlands 2. Final Fantasy 12. Final actually Fantasy 12. the formula of an MMO, only it was a single player game. Mm -hmm. It was more about looting than anything else. Going up, fighting up, grinding, and looting. So a lot of games are like so that. So now, now we don't like looting in games? <laughs> and, you know, I, a, I checked out. <laughs> formula. This is it's too dumb I, of a I question. Playing, but it's not something that I would consider doing in, in a long term. And that's why some people have actually asked me, gee, would you ever do like a playthrough of World of Warcraft? How can I do a playthrough? The game doesn't... Oh, you would many years later, and it's awesome. <laughs> end. The game doesn't have a finite beginning and ending. It just keeps going and going. So, no, I would never play World of Warcraft on a, on a video on YouTube simply because I would never be able to stop or I wouldn't know where to stop or I'd have to cut it short, per se. Imagine using your brain for three seconds and finding a natural ending point. Plus, it's too time-consuming. I have a lot of games that I, you know, I like to get to, and it's way too time-consuming to play an MMO. Um, okay, whatever. A question I've got from about 7,000 people since I brought this up a couple weeks ago is, can we donate games? And uh, the again. answer is, yes, I will begin to accept donations. However, please hold off, because here's the thing. I, I basically said, you know, obviously I can't take them here. The reason I can't take them here is here's because why. in this condo facility, it's not like you have your own personal big mailbox. You get a mail slot or whatever, but I can't. a game wouldn't even fit in there. It's like a little <laughs> box, you know, like magazines and stuff. <laughs> A game wouldn't fit in my mailbox, dudes. So I couldn't even order a game. I mean, the, unfortunately... What we're... Couldn't order a game because a game wouldn't fit in his mailbox. <laughs> Can't order a game. It won't fit in my mailbox. <laughs> Can't order anything. <laughs> I want to order a book. Couldn't buy it. Doesn't fit in my mailbox. A little box, you know, like magazines and stuff are in. So I couldn't even order a game. I mean, the, unfortunately, what would probably end up happening is they leave all my packages in the hallway. Yeah. Who knows in this day and age, people could just steal that. So no. Oh, in this day and age, people are just going to steal it. Okay. No, unfortunately, if I were to start accepting donations, I'm either going to have to find an alternate okay. address where I can accept them, or I might have to set up a P.O. box. So I've been thinking about what I'm going to do. I might talk to a couple people uh, who I know who might be able to accept that kind of stuff for me. If that doesn't work out, then I might go ahead and do a P.O. box. But mm -hmm. I haven't really done too much thought yet. So give me some time to think about it and work on it. And then I'll get back to everyone and let you know if I will start accepting donations. Okay, okay. I wonder if that ever happens. Okay. Um, Next question. Another interesting question. This guy okay. says, Dear Phil, as you know, 16 tonight. Uh, Sony's going to be releasing HD collections of some of their games such as Ico and Shadow of the Colossus. Whoa. Uh, although I've never played these games yet, reviews say that both of these games are so beautiful that they could transcend just being a game. And basically, they're a form of art. Uh, my question is, have you ever played a game that you would consider art? And yeah. have you ever played either of those games from Team Ico? The answer is no, I didn't play either of the games. I didn't know about them. But that was back in the realm of PS2. And really, I what's, was... What's art? What is, it, what is he going to say is art? Like Chrono Trigger or something? Too hardcore into a lot of the PS2. Which I, I agree, that it is art. But I want to hear what he's going to say here. I'm trying to guess his thoughts here. <laughs> WWE Champions is art. Yes. Gotcha games are art. Stuff. I was more playing just fighting games back then than anything else. Okay, sip. So to answer your question. Yeah. Can yeah, do I do that? think that games could become art forms. And the reason I'm saying that is, <sighs> unlike... You I thought we might get a quick answer, but fuck no. The old days, you know, Super Mario Brothers, Legend uh -huh. of Zelda, those games had very basic premises. I think he's literally equating art to the visuals. That's what he that because art has to have visuals in his mind. That's the only thing he's talking about here. And very basic art styles, and uh -huh. they were very limited in the way that they could portray a story. I think now, very limited games becoming first of all way longer than than things like a Black ah. So the art, the length is important for a story. Okay. Buster Hollywood movie. Oh, I don't think so, Grimbo. I think he wouldn't say that music is not art in, the, in his mindset now. I think later he would get it. Like, he'd be like, oh, yeah, that's art, too. But his his current line of thinking is it has to be a beautiful painting or movie to be art, I'm guessing. Some of them becoming more more engrossing, more detailed, more complex, uh, and having beautiful graphical interfaces <laughs> to be able to wow you with this this these Beautiful graphical interfaces. Have you ever described a beautiful... Uh, a graf graphical interfaces can definitely be beautiful. But you don't think it like this. Beautiful graphical interfaces. Oh. Beautiful graphical, more complex, uh, and having beautiful...
beautiful graphical interface <laughs> just being able to wow you with this this these gra- like for example Final Fantasy 13 for all its flaws with its plot and its horrendous voice acting and horrendous character design yeah. the art style that game was just beautiful and could you say that game's a work of art absolutely how um, about the graphical interface I'm really looking more towards the games like the Mass Effects the original BioShock yeah um, those games that just tell such an original story and then uh, so it's the story then. with its a unique art style. Those games I think could be considered works of art, and I wish. Ah, so it had to be unique with art style and have a unique story. That, um, you know, these people who are art critics, things would start to take video games more seriously. <laughs> yeah, we want art critics to judge video games. Well, I have no idea what they were doing with this color. I have no clue what they were doing. With- what were they thinking? they thinking with this composition <laughs> the bottom line is this the same hey. thing used to happen with movies people said oh movies are art they're just these little snippets they're fad they'll go away or whatever movies have now become such a part of the mainstream that everyone accepts them as serious works of art there's multiple award shows every year for movies so it's only a matter of time i feel before video games hey, guilty gear is not art definitely not being that they it's are filth. a relatively new medium they've only really been around in a retail sense for about, what, 20 to 25 years now, for, you know, realistically. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, realistically. I don't know what that means. It's going to be a while before I think they actually get to be taken seriously in that aspect. But I think we're getting there. I think a lot of we're getting are there, really dude. Not art yet, but getting there. Reaching that height of achievement. Um, uh-huh. Awesome. All right, I think one more question here, and then we'll jump on to page two, so we'll split the video. Uh, this next question. Hey, Phil. Watching your videos, I noticed that you pick up your games from the store. I'm wondering why, because here in the UK, all my friends and I... <laughs> Shout out to UK, style host. So there's two, there's two reasons for this, and it's a, it's a dual part question. Number one, I've already answered. <laughs> there's two reasons for this, it's a dual part question. So there's two, there's two reasons for this, and it's a, it's a dual part question. Okay. Number one, I've already answered is, one method to get games delivered is to use a, 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 a service like Gamefly, or use a service like Netflix. Um, uh-huh. I don't use those simply because it's very hard to get the newest games on release day. Okay. In fact, most of those services get those games backlogged for months. I've said this before in a video, but a friend of mine last year actually wanted to play Batman Arkham Asylum. Dude, you're on episode, like, game five. You can stop saying I've said before in a video. Just just say it. He didn't get it for two months. And this was on his list, like, months before the game came out that he wanted it, he wanted it. He never got it. So uh-huh. for me, to really be in the know and to be the first person, or not the first, but one of the first at least be in a timely manner reviewing or playing through these games, I need to buy the games. Uh-huh. Um, the second answer here is, why, you know, why is it going to get them delivered? I've kind of already answered it. Have you? To get a game delivered, you know, it's going to be, it might be in a big pack. It doesn't, fit, it doesn't fit in my mailbox, so I can't accept it. And here in this condo facility, there's so many people. There's, I think there's over 100 units. They're all jam-packed into this one hallway of mail. I wouldn't want them to leave a box just loose there in the hallway and I'm not here all day to sign for packages. I'm at work. I live alone. So there's not like I have someone here to sign for all my stuff. Uh-huh. So unfortunately, unless I were to have all those games delivered somewhere else, if I have them delivered somewhere else, that means I would have to drive whenever the games come out to go pick them up, which means less time to actually play the game. So the bottom line is what I usually hey. do when the game comes out is during a lunch break at work, I drive to the nearest game store, which is actually in my local mall. I pick up the game at lunch, and then when I get home from work, I play it. And incidentally, that's what I'm going to do tomorrow with Dead Rising. Yeah, so Dead Rising too. Big ups, great playthrough. One of DSP's inbox for today. Um, I'm going to come back with part two. We're going to address a couple more questions. I think these will be a little bit more controversial, actually. Than the oh, controversial, dude. Here, and uh, we'll go from there. Plus Twitter questions. Yeah, plus Twitter questions. All right, last bit of the day. Let's go. Good pause there. <laughs> All right, last bit of the day. Let's go. Get you off it to the night stream if you want to go there in timely fashion here. Ah, what's up, everyone? Welcome to part two of today's episode. What's up, of the everyone? Box, where I answer all of your questions through my uh, Hotmail account, DSP Inbox at Hotmail.com. And also the new thing we're, thing we're doing today. Uh, what? A couple minutes before I, I decided to record this video, I put something up on my Twitter page, uh, which is They Call Me DSP. Um, and I said, hey, throw, throw me some quick questions and I'll try to address them in the video at the end. I got six really quick questions that I'll give really quick answers to, and it'll kind of be like a, a, a turbo round at the end of this video that uh, I think I will add uh, as a part of my videos from now on. Okay, so the next question. Okay, finally. Holy crap, this is a long one. 
Oh, okay, God. bear with me. This is a long question, but this is a good one. Can't you figure this out before you this start? Dean Hevner, by the way, and he says, Dean Hevner, big ups, dude. I'm unaware of your position on answering email. All right, I'm going to skip that whole first paragraph. It's basically just, I saw your video series on heavy rain. I was at a loss for words. It was probably one of the best things I had ever watched on TV and theatrical movies included. Well, thank you, Dean. A lot of people say I that think he's talking about the game was my best and not one. your playthrough here, but okay. Go win, ahead. And, you know, everything that was just going uh -huh. on. Heavy and rain, dude. I've been a fan since heavy rain. Uh -huh. um, and I appreciate that compliment because, I mean, you know, for me to just do that live improv kind of style and you tell me that's better than these people who put millions of dollars in these TV shows and movies, that's dude. really large. Dude, who takes that literally? Who takes that compliment literally? We found the person that does. He's right here. He's <laughs> okay. Let's get it right here. The guy says it looks like a you know Hollywood movie. That's what the guy says. And what does Phil say? Well, that's a huge compliment because as you know, they spend millions of dollars for those Hollywood movies. And if I, to say I'm better than those millions of dollars Hollywood movies, that's really a big compliment. He's not saying that, man. That compliment because I mean, you know, for me to just do that live improv kind of style, and you tell me that's better than these people. Millions of dollars in these TV shows and movies. That's a really large compliment. So thank you. Holy shit, um, man! I would probably never watch a video game play through that isn't you performing again. Again, thanks. Again, um, so thanks, dude. Because as performers, there's, I mean, there's like people at Juilliard and shit that do performing, and to say you're never gonna watch without me, and that means a lot to me. Okay, that means a lot. Like when you grow up and your your kid has a, like a school play, but you won't even watch it because you said you only watch performances with me. I mean, that means a lot, okay? Because you're like basically saying, fuck your kid to watch my content. And that's really cool. So thank you for that. That really means a lot, dude. That does mean a lot. Come on. Watching your playthrough of Heavy Rain, the taxidermist, which was the DLC for Heavy Rain, by the way, and the Heavy Rain alternate ending playthrough. That was when I actually replayed Heavy Rain and did some alternate choices to see how they would affect the story. Mm -hmm. uh, he says, I want more. Uh, I would no. like to know if there's any way that I could somehow obtain a physical or a digital copy of your Heavy Rain, the taxidermist, and Heavy Rain alternate endings on a DVD format, or if I could somehow <laughs> download those movies. I went to CafePress.com, Darkside Phil. Yeah, that's my Cafe Press page. That's my Cafe Press. Dude, this guy wrote the perfect question. Let's him show whatever he wants. Stays how awesome it is. How you changed your life. In the hopes of somehow obtaining a physical or digital copy that I've been seeing. Uh, coincidentally, I also want some locks of your hair. And if you could, shake your keyboard into a box and then give me the shit that you find there. I'm really interested in that. Also, if you don't mind, could you jerk off in a cup and then send that cup as well? That'd be great. Thanks, DSB. Speaking, but I didn't see anything. He says there was a fine selection of merchandise, but I don't see any videos. Um, so if you could please contact me back with regards to whether I can obtain a physical or digital copy. Uh, I Basically, he, he thinks that would be great. Um, <laughs> a couple things here. First of all, you know... I, you know, okay, first off, yes, I am awesome. Thank you for saying that. That does mean a lot. The movies that I put on YouTube, and I do have the hard copies. They're archived on hard drives. Um, so the good news is, if I ever wanted to think to do something like that, I could. But there's a lot of ramifications with something ramifications, like that. Ramifications, dude. You know, Uh-oh. Basically, taking uh, footage of a game and selling it might be the difference between making what I do on YouTube legal or illegal. Um... And the reason I say it is this. Everyone knows Mystery Science Theater 3000. Everyone's heard of that TV series. Well, what they basically do in that series is they watch old, you know... Well, you know, the, the, the universal picture of watching, the universal hand sign for watching is pointing at the wall. Everyone's heard of that TV series. Well, what they basically do in that series is they watch... This is the watching. This is universal. Um, very common. This is your watching symbol. Everyone knows that, right? That's that means watching. <laughs> oh shit! There we go. Part yours because your choices create part the game developers it could oh, complete playthrough of a game illegal. I don't know, and the reason I say that is as we've had this debate last year. When you do a playthrough of a game, the difference between uh -huh. a game and a movie is that a game is interactive, uh -huh. especially a game like Heavy Rain. Your choices in the game could completely change your experience of that game and what you're seeing on the screen. So really, a playthrough of a game is legally 
I'd say probably part the game developer's property, but it's also part yours because your choices <laughs> created what you see on the screen. Um, and therefore, it would be a really a gray area legally for me to try to sell a DVD of something like that. So unfortunately, I'd have to say for selling it, I don't know. I, I would have to really look into it, try to, you know. It sounds like a lot of work. So basically, I'm not going to look into that. But thank you. Get, get my, my How is that different than making ad revenue off it, though? T's crossed and my eyes dotted and basically make sure that it would be, I'd be covered. If T's crossed and my eyes dotted, dude. Anyone were to ever try to speak up. <laughs> Unfortunately, T was crossed. Um, Double crossed by you not giving him a ride. Um, however, that doesn't mean that, you know, I might not consider something like that in the future. And also doesn't mean that with some of the song remixes that people have made that I won't maybe seek to maybe sell an album or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Why not? Free songs. Yeah, if people were interested. Um, yeah, I I'll, I'll use your shitty song remixes and make money from those. That'd be hype. I have so many song remixes. I'm pretty sure I could make a pretty lengthy album. Um, lengthy, and obviously, dude. if something like that were to happen, I would ask the people and the artists who created those songs if they wanted a cut. I would be oh, fair about it. Um, I would be fair about it, okay? They would get their 5%. However, I don't know where the hell Ghost Drone's been. I haven't oh, uh, God damn it. I need to get my, my gunshot. Fair right, here it comes. Um, you ready? However, I don't know where the hell whip. Ghost Drone's been. I haven't seen the guy Maybe for whip's better. months. He hasn't made a remix in quite a Pull while. Pull that shirt down. People are asking, where is he? I don't know. So you're asking the wrong person. You'll have to ask him. Maybe he's just taking I'm a break. I'm as hell. But there's been a lot of playthroughs where he could have probably made some really good songs, and he hasn't really done anything. And Ooh. no one else has either. It's not just him. I mean, there used to be a couple other people who do remixes, and no one's really done anything. So I don't know what the deal is if people just kind of lost interest in doing it in the project as a project, but... Yeah, he's complaining people aren't making enough songs anymore. Guys, pick it up. Pick it up, please. I need more songs. You guys used to do it, but... I don't know. Anyway. Anywho. Moving on. Um, moving on. Next question. It says, Dear Phil, there are many games being announced, such as Bioshock Infinite, Killzone 3, and Little Big Planet 2. Most of the games coming up are mostly sequels or extensions oh, to the previous Latin games. of the shirt. I have two questions. My first question is, what do you think of, about, about sequels to games? If it's good, should they keep making more of the same title over and over, or should they just stop at the first one? <laughs> My second question is, oh, do you God. think that any of the sequels or continuation of the game, original Pinky. games that are coming up uh, interest you like the one stated before? Thank you for taking your time, blah, blah, blah. And that was from Kevin. Um, Big ups, Kevin. A sequel is a tricky thing because... A lot of the times people say it's always harder to make a sequel as good as the original. Uh, for movies, that's especially true. Trying Ooh. to take a, a, a premise of a movie and basically change it enough or rehash it enough or refresh it enough or even lengthen it enough to make a sequel that's as good as the original. No um, one cares, please. And so I guess uh, with video games, it's going to be kind of the same. Uh -huh, it's not the same, dude. In my opinion, yes. really, this is the key. It's... How much did you change from the original to warrant that this be a separate release? And ooh, 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 looking for a bite. Basically, do you think it's worth you know an official? <laughs> he's got he zoned out with his fingernail inspection. Sixty dollar release. So, for example, a game oh, like God. Mass How many examples do we need? Two, they improved dramatically on the gameplay. Dramatically, formula. dude. The it was so dramatic. The narrative of the story was much longer. Um, the only real disappointment, in my opinion, was they focused a lot on the side characters rather than on the main plot. And I think that if you just played the main plot, you probably could have beaten the game fairly quickly, and there's not a lot of meat there. Most of the plot is based around these peripheral characters that you're trying to recruit for your <clears throat> squad. Uh-huh, squad, dude. Basically. And, uh, Basically. Uh -huh. Compare that with a game like Bioshock 2, where you really didn't expand much at all upon the first game. I mean, the gameplay was almost identical, besides the fact that you were now a big daddy, and there was one or two, you know, different <laughs> abilities that you could yeah, um, his gaming takes are so bad. It's really so tough to keep with these. To be able to use the plasmid and a gun at the same time. I and mean, the story was pretty much dead on, similar to the first one. Uh, didn't really elaborate much on the universe. It was kind of like, all right, you're going back to uh, Rapture, and it's kind of the same exact area you were in the first game, and just deal with it. Uh, mm -hmm. And then on top of that, yep, in that game, yep. they tried to add on multiplayer which unfortunately ended up being kind of hilarious because it wasn't really taken seriously. Uh, does that count? <laughs> I personally don't think anyone does that count or not? It kind of does. To begin with. So <laughs> it really depends on what effort you put into your game and, and what the final product ends up being. Was that a not There's funny or no? People argue, for example, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, a lot of people say it was way better than Sonic the Hedgehog 1 because it improved upon the formula, <laughs> added a new character, Red added Kel, new you, you want it? added so much more to the game. <laughs> 
game. So okay. Not fun. My opinion. I mean, Dick you should you stop with it? if you make a really good game, should you intentionally not make a sequel just to you know or keep the integrity of that game what it is? No, I think that everyone who makes something I don't even good know what he's talking has the about anymore. right to try to top it and make a sequel to continue it. But if you're gonna do it, don't just send in. You know, don't dial it in. Don't just do it for a check. Do it to actually. Don't dial it in. Try to improve your first product <laughs> and put some effort in. You can really tell when you get a game at works. You watch a movie where they put the effort in in the sequel. For example, Back to the Future 2 versus oh. Back to the Future 1. Yeah, Back to the Future again. He loved these big 80s blockbusters, dude. One was really, it was genius. Um, yeah, that's, Weston, you're right. He meant to say don't phone it in because that means don't try. But he said don't dial it in, which is means like, don't be reserved, right? <laughs> Which is not what he meant to say. You're right. He said, don't phone it in. <laughs> and it really made you feel like, wow, this is a really good uh, sequel. Uh -huh, but then you kind of continue on with that series, Back to the Future 3. Uh-oh. And it was kind of like, all right, let's do the same formula a third time, but now let's do it in the past. It's like, all right, how many times can they rehash this formula? And really, not a lot of people like Back to the Future 3. So it's kind of the similar thing with games. It's like, you have Halo. You have Halo 2, where they make significant improvements <laughs> graphics to the gameplay <laughs> then you have halo 3 where okay there were some improvements it wasn't as dramatic as a, of a leaf as Astro halo it wasn't was it wasn't as dramatic it's what i heard but there were some improvements it wasn't as dramatic as a, of a as leaf dramatic, as okay. halo 1 was to halo 2 uh -huh. sure there was dual wielding but the dual wielding wasn't massively useful to be completely honest okay it wasn't then useful had, wasn't useful okay halo odst which really wasn't a jump at all it was a step backwards and it was a complete waste of fucking time uh -huh. and then you have a Next game like time. halo reach we're which, we entered the let him cook in this fucking question man i'm out for all intents and purposes is a good game but really all it is is a perfected version of halo 2 uh, and so you ask so... yourself gee were all these sequels warranted and the answer ultimately for a series like halo is no they weren't uh, Bungie just wanted to keep making versions of the game to make money, and mm -hmm. they could have done drastically different things. For example, in Halo Reach, they have a level in the campaign where you're doing space fighting. You're like, wow, when you're playing this level, you're like, wow, this is some real innovation. You've never done anything like this in the other Halo games. Like, man, I can't wait to Clap. jump into multiplayer and do this until you find out that's not in multiplayer. Multiplayer is pretty much vanilla Halo 2 with some game variants and some different modes and things like that. And you're like, why the fuck didn't they put this new game mode, an innovative game mode, into the multiplayer? And the answer is because, really, this is what they do every year. Or every <laughs> that The reason is that's what they do. Every years they come out with a new version of Halo to cash in. Uh -huh. And uh, not to say that Halo Reach isn't a worthy game, because it is, in my opinion, a very good game. Maybe one of the best games of this year, depending on how the next few months go. So... But it really seems like once you start playing the multiplayer, you're like, man, this really feels like Halo 2 with a couple variants. And I'm wondering oh why God. it seems like they've gone back to that oh when God. instead of adding an, a bunch of new stuff to make it innovative. Well, enough. The, well, the question was, do you, what about remakes? I forget the question. That's the hardest part. It must be a different game. The game he, lo he lulls you into this like feeling of like you do, you just your brain is, is out just checks out and then it's like well, what are we talking about anymore i don't even know it really comes to mind to me uh for what are we talking about why are we here is Call of Duty you start questioning life in general for modern warfare one where they added all kinds of things like says words like the leveling system unlocking uh -huh. guns progressively with online uh -huh. play now compare that with its sequel modern warfare 2 which came out last year which really didn't add much at all they uh -huh. added death streaks which is just a variation on kill streaks <laughs> I thought I asked about, like, what's some cool remakes? I thought that was the question. Some people thought broke the game. Uh -huh. um, it added not much. It was the same unlocking system. Not uh, much. The same kind of leveling. There really wasn't anything added to Please the multiplayer. Please end this. And so a lot of people would argue that a game like Modern Warfare 2 is a way to dial it in and just try to make free money. Oh, so dial it in. There is dial it in. Maybe the dial it in was, on, in, was intentional, but it's not used correctly here. Not dial it in. Dial it in is a positive, isn't it? Like, while wow, Modern Warfare One was the game where they really put in the the innovation and improved upon the previous game. So, okay. oh god, sorry about that. It all depends. Sequels can be go either way. In my opinion, sequels are a good thing as long as these developers put in the effort. Same thing. Don't dial movies. it in. As long as the the producers and the people who make the movie put in the effort. Don't dial the it in. Sequels warranted. Um. Okay. All right. 
Anyways. Yeah, one more question, and then we're going to go to the quick Twitter. One more question. I'm going to fire off here. One more question. Get, we need to dial in this, this, this these answers. Mosey State fan. Mosey State fan. The question is, hey, DSP, I remember when G4 TV had gaming shows. Hey, remember that? When G4 TV actually had gaming shows on it? Holy shit. <laughs> well, back in my day, we had day, gaming electric shows. Electric Playground, Cinematech, and more. Uh-huh. And then, when the year hit 2005 or 2006, all of a sudden they canceled all the gaming shows. Yeah. For me, I was mad. What are your thoughts? Well, my thoughts are this, and this is very oh, simple. Okay, okay, okay. We got to get out of here, but I'll say this. He says all the hosts were stupid and no one knew them, and they should have got YouTubers like him to be the hosts, because then people would have appreciated it better. That's my guess. The people who made these gaming stations, these gaming TV shows, weren't gamers. Oh, they yeah, didn't definitely know how to appeal to gamers. And so rather than doing the right thing to market to the right crowd, they sold out. That's basically what happened. So you know, you have a, uh, <laughs> They sold out. All right, let's hear how they sold out. What, they had commercials? Uh, a channel like G4 TV. <clears throat> when they started, they had some personalities on there. But really, when you started watching the show, you're like, wait a minute. These people who are on here really don't seem like gamers. They seem like actors. And that's exactly what they were. They were hiring actors to try to pretend like they were gamers. Uh, there we go. Told you. Your, your buy-in. So, for example, X-Play. They, they needed to get your buy-in with that. They needed to get your buy-in. <laughs> Swaggy, I don't think they get skipped. They they go in line though. Don't worry, it's in order. So it it, it always is gonna happen. Pretend like they were gamers and get your, uh-huh. your buy in. So for example, they need X-Men. your buy in, dude. Do you really think that Adam Sessler knows a fucking thing about any video game? Oh Absolutely. yeah, Adam Sessler, the the worldwide world renowned model, Adam Sessler. Yeah, you definitely hire him for that mug. Absolutely nothing about video games. <laughs> and whoever the girl is they have on there now, she knows even fucking less. And uh, it was wh- why would you say she knows less, sir? How do you even know? And but whoever the girl is they have on there now, she knows even fucking less. And it was oh. hilarious because someone said to oh, me... Oh, it's hilarious. Here we go. Get ready. You ready to laugh? I forget what it was for. But I guess, the, I guess Morgan Webb, that's her name. I guess someone said, Phil, why are you playing this game? Morgan Webb just reviewed it and gave it like a two. I was like, Uh-oh. what? Who the fuck cares what Morgan Webb has to say about a fucking video game? She's not playing video games. She obviously knows what the fuck she's talking about. Because the game, if I remember correctly, was a decent, at least, game. Nowhere. So the game was decent. Not good, but decent. Near uh, getting the score that she should have given it. And uh, why would I listen to a talking head who's obviously an a paid actor on TV to tell me what's good about She's getting paid to be a host of a TV show, sir? What, do you want her to be not paid for that? Oh, she's just getting paid and you aren't. That's why you're angry. Got it. I'm not an idiot. I'm an adult. I'm a professional. I'm a business person. I have... <laughs> I'm a business person. <laughs> I'm a professional. I'm a business person. Why would I listen to a talking head who's obviously an a paid actor on TV to tell me what's good about gaming? I'm not an idiot. I'm an adult. I'm a professional. I'm a business person. Uh, sir, you have a, I, a hateful shirt truth cafe press t-shirt. That's about four sizes too small with your cowboy hat on and dark side Stein to the right. We're looking for the businessman here. Oh, you got the wireless printer, though. So that's coming in clutch here. I have a, a, a serious full-time job. I'm I have a serious full-time job. You might have a full-time job. That's not serious, all right? I'm mature enough to be able to weigh the pros and cons of a game and give you guys an honest opinion when I play it. So, no. I mean, it's really annoying to see a channel like that instead of really... Catering to the gamer, which is what they could have done. Tell us what they could have done. What they really could have done is tried to go out there and follow things like MLG and follow things like the Street Fighter Evolution series of tournaments and try to find a way to promote those events mm. and hype them up and make them look like really interesting events. Because They did cover all those, didn't they? I remember that. The core, the core of it, there really is a lot of excitement. That's the core of it, by the way. Them up ...and make them look like really interesting events because at the core... Here's the core. The core... International symbol for core is this. This is the core. Steeple is all the people in the core. (laughs) Core of it, there really is a lot of excitement in the competition that goes on with those events. Uh The problem is the people who produce those channels, like G4, have no fucking idea what they're doing. They're obviously not people who were ingrained in the gaming community to know what was in. Oh, now it's ingrained. So it's also core and ingrained. Sign language is pretty hard. So the first one was core. They're doing. They're 
obviously this not symbol right here evil. could be core here, here, right here yeah it's tough but this could be core or ingrained and you got to learn that it's all about the sentence if it means core or ingrained but you'll you'll get it you'll pick it up ingrained in the gaming community to know what was interesting so you know they would flail around with shows like Cinematech where they would show you all the the full motion video clips from games Cinematech was awesome I'm going to find one of the videos on YouTube later because I remember that show was sweet when it back in the day. But how often do you sit there and just watch the full motion video from a video game? I mean, come on. It's, it's the interactive part of a game that really grips us. Uh, what was that other game? There was some other it was game. the interactive part that really grips us. Okay. And I remember where they would do playthroughs of the games. Uh, I think I actually watched one of Hitman 2. This guy was doing a playthrough, but there was no commentary. There was no criticism. There were no tips. It was just showed the guy trying to beat the game. It was like a direct feed. Who the fuck wants to sit at their TV and just watch direct feed of a game? That's not <laughs> funny. That's not interesting. That I, I'll, If I want to do that, I'll go play the fucking game. It's not funny. It's not fun. It's not meaningful. The thing that makes the difference is finding a personality who can maybe make jokes, explain what they're doing in the game, explain what's easy, explain what's hard, and give their reactions. That's what people want to see. Ah. And, you know, people like me are doing it on YouTube. I mean, if you would sign one of us to do that on TV, Told you, I, told you, here it is. It fucking... I told you, if they would have signed YouTubers like me, there it is, there it is. Got there. I'm getting good at this, predicting the questions. Come on. <laughs> on YouTube, I mean, if you would sign one of us to do that on TV, I, it would have fucking made money. It would have been popular. would have made money, dude. What they ended up doing was they put all these crappy shows on that didn't have a, a serious... We, we got to get a counter for finger counts, man. He does it every question. Tone to them. Didn't take anyone seriously. In fact, I, I actually do remember, I don't know if it was G4 or another channel, they did cover uh, fighting game tournaments one year, and yeah. guess what they did when they went there? What they, they made do? fun of everyone at the tournament. They were like, gee, are you ever going to get laid? Or gee, do you know where the Krispy Kreme is? Or some... <laughs> I got to see this. Please say it's on YouTube. Please say it's on you. Are you ever going to get laid? <laughs> what, what would they say? What they say? Uh, fighting game. This show sounds like the best show of all time, by the way. Tournaments one year. And guess what they did when they went there? They made fun of everyone at the tournament. They were like, gee, are you ever going to get laid? Or gee, do you know where the Krispy Kreme is? Or some <laughs> bullshit like that. Talking to the gamers instead of taking them seriously. Uh... And it's like, how could you be a gaming channel when you don't take video games? <laughs> Seriously, you think it's a joke that people would even... If anyone can find... I'm looking here, but there's a lot of options. Because now you got the new G4 as well to fight for. So I couldn't find it on first glance. But if I find it next week, I'll play it. Consider it a competitive event. I mean, that's ridiculous. Well, we're spreading the grease around. We're doing the grease farming right now. Disrespectful to the people that you're, you're, you're taking video of. So I don't understand where they were coming from there. Um, that reminds Phil of when he got bullied. And now it's funny because if anyone saw... Oh, this it's year funny. At Evolution, uh, fighting What's funny? Championships, What's funny? Adam Sessler was there, and they insisted that he do commentary for the finals, which made him look like a complete fucking moron. Not he's funny. Absolutely nothing about Shake Street Fighter. Not curious doing commentary for the finals of the Street Fighter 4 tournament. The G4 oh, yeah, D Dog, is that it? Is he talking about Triumph the Insult Dog? Like, is that what he's talking about, I bet? I could be. Triumph the Insult Dog, for those know, let me pick explain it for you. It's a stupid hand puppet dog that they would say, like, insulting shit to people, but that was the gag. He's talking about that? That's funny. They, wherever they go, they make fun of it. They could be at, you know, <laughs> everywhere they go, they make fun of people. It doesn't matter where they are. If they went to the NFL, they make fun of the players. It's like, you know, oh, look at those nice tights you guys are wearing. That's the joke. Once again, they're producers having absolutely no fucking idea what people want. We don't want actor Adam Sessler giving live commentary. What you should have had was someone with personality. Uh, you had like, Seth Killian, who was really... Like, le name with three letters, maybe? The technical guy explaining the technical aspect. You should have had someone with flair, with personality, who also understood what was going on, giving some uh, interesting You have flair now. Uh -huh. That would have put butts in seats. That would yeah. have entertained. But instead, they go back to their staple guy, Adam Sessler, who fucking fails at every turn. And they put him in a seat, and he doesn't know what he's talking about. Yeah, he goes so far as to say, it's all tied up when it wasn't even close to being tied up. One guy was way ahead of the other guy uh, in the gameplay. So, uh -huh, so, what's wrong with those channels? I don't know. They're misguided. They're not seeking the right Lost people. Lost their way. Professional people who know what the common gamer wants to see.
uh-huh. were able common to gamer. capture interest. And their- so how can you be both the common gamer and all these people that you think you're one of these people they should have called on to be on the show? Failing. And so when you go to G4, common TV, gamer. that's why most of the time when you watch it today, you see Cops reruns. You see Star Trek The Next Generation. You see, what was that, uh, Ninja Warrior from fucking Japan reruns. You don't see anything to do with gaming because they've actually given up. They've, they've realized they're that they don't up, know what the fuck they're doing. They've given up on this as a business venture. Yep, that's what they realized. We don't know what the fuck we're doing. They just decided to put shovel shit onto that channel. Shovel Hopefully shit. Hopefully someone would watch it. The bottom line is, those <laughs> reruns get more views than any of their gaming-related content because, again, they don't know how to create proper content. They're not seeking the right people to do that for them. Okay. It's a shame because there's people out there like me, like plenty of other people, who are yep. willing to save their companies, but they don't actually go out and seek the right talent but they need to be seeking me out you look at this. you see this this is what you get this is what you could have on your on your screens look at this this is a professional business person i'm an adult I'm a business style person this is what you could have on your tv screen g4 yeah here morgan webb i could save your company i'm, a, I'm an adult <laughs> instead they keep hiring adam sessler to try to do it for them so oh, maybe Sessler. one day they'll wise up uh, but right now is. it's not looking too good that's all I can say about G4 TV. Big ups, G4. All right. Six questions. Really quick answers. These are my Twitter questions. Six questions. Damn. Here we go. Number one, what do you think of the PS Move now that you've played it? My answer is I actually am impressed with the PS Move. I think the controls are way better than the Wii, especially the three-dimensional controls uh, of being able to move Whoa. forward and backward with the depth perception. Is it 3D or what? <laughs> or not? I thought the softball just hit you in the face. And uh, overall, I think that there's a lot of potential However, I don't know if any third-party developers are going to really use that potential or if it's just going to die out. I guess we have to, to wait and see. Uh-huh. Um, next question. What is okay. your sexual preference? Yeah. What a stupid fucking question. Have That's you watched great. any of my playthroughs? Obviously, I like women, you dumb fuck. I mean, I talk about tits and ass and pussy and vagina and shit. Ooh, mama! Of course. Look, this is the step. This is an overreach, right? So for, for if you are heterosexual or whatever sexual orientation you are, it doesn't take you this long to describe it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it, it doesn't. It shouldn't take you this long to describe your actual sexual orientation, no matter what it is. It doesn't require sentences. <laughs> but let's hear. Let's hear this. Oh, I'd love those ass and vagina, all that stuff, and boobs, it's like a bag of sand, dude. Okay, I love that shit. I'm definitely heterosexual and loving it. I like women, you dumb fuck. I mean, I talk about tits and ass and pussy and vagina and shit and blowjobs, like, all the time. So I don't know why you would think that I'm not... I talk about blowjobs, dude. Don't you, don't you know I'm heterosexual? I talk about blowjobs all the time, all right? Don't get it twisted. Talk about blowjobs. <laughs> talk about anal. I talk about all that stuff, okay? Two of my favorite things in the world are vagina and boobs. You know what I'm saying? So, don't fuck around, all right? I'm very heterosexual. Uh, you know, a straight dude. That's a really dumb question. Oh, look, and, and so offended by getting asked. Offended by being asked. Um, will you ever play a game drunk again like you did with Spider-Man, Whip of Shadows, and Fallout 3? I don't know, and the reason I say that is, is... I think my playthroughs really are coming out a lot better now that I'm Sober. Like, for example, Heavy Rain would have not been anywhere near as good as it was if I was drunk because I wouldn't have been, you know, <laughs> shooting from the hip, making wise cracks, making those funny jokes and things and observations that I. <laughs> click, the click, the fucking, the snaps. <laughs> I was able to make. So, however, for games like Fallout 3, for a game like Web of Shadows, where really I didn't want to make too many jokes, it was more like grinding through the games. Maybe that is a little bit more funny. I don't know, but. Most, you didn't want to make too many jokes? I don't do that anymore just because uh-huh. I try to take it a little bit more seriously. Okay. I think, uh, the serious playthroughs won't have drinking, okay? I have enough of a following now that I should take it seriously rather than just fuck around and, like I said, dial it in. I don't dial it in. I try to... How much? Di- how many times have we heard dialing it in today? Put maximum effort into what I do. So, unfortunately, I probably won't be drinking anymore when I'm playing those kind of games. Um, are you going to Evolution next year? Evolution is the Nationals in the U.S. of fighting games. Yeah, what's up? The answer is a maybe, but a strong maybe. It really depends so, on Marvel versus... What's a strong maybe? Does that mean po- leaning towards yes? But I think he's not using it like that. Capcom 3. 
and what I think about it when it is released, and if I feel like it's a competitive enough game to play seriously. Uh-huh. Um, Marvel vs. Capcom 1 and Marvel vs. Capcom 2, I was a serious competitor in those games, tournament competitor. <laughs> yeah, I tried that's, what I, that's my theory. <laughs> I was known in them. and uh, I, I was known in them? All around the country to play them. I was known in them. Uh, I was and, known in uh, them. I'm, if this game is good enough, I might get back into it, but I guess Ooh. we'll have to see. Um, but hell, I mean, even if I don't get into it, it might be worth it just to show up to Evo for one last time, give it one last hurrah. Yeah, monkey spank, right on time. Get a thousand of my fans in there, pack the fucking place, and just blow it up. I mean... <laughs> get a thousand of my fans and just blow it up, dude. He wanted to get a thousand of his fans and blow it up. He is so riding high right now. Yeah. He uh, thinks he's on top of the world right now. Not a negative thing in sight. A thousand of my fans in there, pack the fucking place, and just blow it up. I mean... Yeah, that'd be great. I think that would be a pretty cool thing to do in Vegas. Uh, you know, I, I don't know what you guys think, but just to do one last hurrah and just fucking live it up. <laughs> oh, God. That's a lot. Of... <laughs> We're going to need a bigger handicap section. With, you know, meeting all kinds of people out there and just having fun and living it up might be a good idea. So, but we'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. Oh, because now he's thinking he can finally have people in the suites he always gets, right? Because when he was just in the fighting game community, he would buy suites, but he wouldn't even get anyone up there. Now he's thinking, hang on, these people don't know I'm an asshole yet. They don't, they don't hate me like everyone else. These people actually like me, my YouTube fans. If I can bring them to a fighting game, I might have some action in my sweets, dude. It's all making sense. What happens? Next to last question is, how do you plan on playing the Microsoft Connect with, with your back problems? Great question. Because Great as everyone question. knows, unlike the PS Move, which is just two hand controllers... The Kinect actually is a camera that records your whole body motion, and the answer is this. I'm going to play it very carefully, and I'm going to try to be careful and not hurt myself, and uh. hopefully I won't, and hopefully it will be successful. If not, if I start playing a game and it sucks or I hurt myself, well, then I'm going to have to stop. But I'm going to give it a go. We're going to, we're going to try it together and see how it works out. That sounds great. Final question for this. Hey, final box. question of the night. What do you think of Street Fighter tier list? That's a flap, too. I think that they exist like to basically gone. explain... The level of skill that's needed to, number one, learn a character, and number two, play at a high level with a certain character. But by no means do I actually believe that tier lists will dictate the final ability of someone to win with that character. And a perfect example is Super Turbo. Uh, oh, Absolutely, there are characters in Super Turbo that are easier Supposed to play be rapid with than fire others, that are better overall than others, and have better matchups. But rapid the bottom fire. line is, go to Japan, they'll get your ass beat by the crappiest character and the best character, because those guys have learned the game so much, they've learned every matchup, it becomes all about reaction, about the overall game plan, and about capitalizing on people's mistakes, what? much more than it's just about a matchup or a character selection. So, okay. tier lists exist basically to teach you who can you learn quickly, who can you win with quickly, but on a higher level, tier lists really don't matter. Because once you learn a game to that level, anyone can win with any character. Okay, so. whatever, I'm not going to comment on all that. Alright, that's yep. it for this episode of DSP Inbox, Good. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I answered uh, a lot of your questions. Uh -huh. Again, for the next episode, I'll probably do it in two to three weeks. Send uh -huh. your questions to dspinbox at hotmail.com or keep your eyes on my Twitter page. They call me DSP. No. And uh, I will probably half an hour to a couple minutes before I make my next video be announcing, hey, let's take some quick Twitter questions and I'll throw them up and uh, I'll answer them in the video. So thanks a lot. Thanks for tuning in. See you guys next time. Okay, we did it. We made it. We made it. All fucking legends. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Good question in chat. An Anonymous Fish says, how many more do we have? Of DSP Inbox, we have another four, two more. So next week will be our last Ask the, in uh, Ask the uh, DSP Inbox. Then we'll move to Ask the King. So one more week. That means two whole videos. And then we'll get to Ask the King finally. And then our journey can officially start i guess but it's already started i mean we're already counting everything but anyways i'll let you out thanks so much everybody for hanging out it was very meaningful for me after the outro song i'll send you over to piece of pieces stream of course and uh, you're all legend man hanging out saturday night watching some stupid shit you're awesome thanks for the contributions very meaningful we'll see you tomorrow for that being said night everybody